uh, November 8th meeting of the Situa Planning Board. I want to make a, an addition to the agenda and then move for acceptance. And under old business, new business, I want to talk about the water resource protection article for the annual company, or the special company. So if we can add that in under old business and new business. Uh, I would then be looking for a motion to accept the agenda. I so move. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. So at 7.30, the first item on the agenda is the informal discussion of a flexible open space subdivision plan for 305 Country Way. They're looking to put four, a four-lot subdivision on a little over six acres. Greg, I'm going to introduce you to the team. And sure. Good evening. My name is Greg Morse. I'm a registered engineer, Morse Engineering. With me from my office is Jeff Hassett, and uh, the applicant, Doug Sheeran, is with us. This is the um, preliminary, preliminary hearing for a proposed flexible open space development um, proposed at 305 Country Way. What we're uh, proposing here is a four-lot subdivision, and what I want to do is go over the existing site. I'll show you our conventional yield and I'll show you our flexible open space layout. So in looking at the plan, the plan that's on the board, this is the conventional density sketch plan. And what you'll see is this is country way off to the east. Um, to the north, we have developed residential property. To the south, we have developed residential properties. Um, to the west, we have a wetland that's on our site. This ultimately is uh, a wetland that's tributary to the reservoir, which is off the plan further down here. Mm -hmm. There's an existing house on this property. You'll see the existing house number 305. There's an existing driveway and barn. Uh, we have approximately 200 feet of frontage along Country Way. The front half of the site from here, the pen toward Country Way, this is the R2 zoning district. The rear half is the R1 zoning district. The wetland is shown in blue. This is a bordering vegetated wetland. We just had that flagged this past fall. That's in front of the Conservation Commission for uh, review uh, right now. So, topography, generally the land slopes from Country Way at the high point. All of this land slopes to the rear, to the wetland area. We've conducted soil testing on the property. We've had great uh, perk test results. We've done perk tests kind of scattered throughout the property, all witnessed by the Board of Health, all passing, uh, no problems for septic systems on this. In total, this is an eight and a half acre piece of property. And to be applicable under the flexible open space, you're required to have a minimum of 160,000 square feet of upland on your property. This property has 187,000 square feet of, uh, of upland area. So in looking at the flexible open space, we first develop a conventional density plan. What you'll see is that we're proposing a roadway. Uh, the roadway is approximately 220 feet in width. And we're providing frontage and area for four lots off of that. Uh, all of the frontages are taking off, taken off of the proposed road. There were no waivers that we see or, or need in, in developing this road A. All of the lots comply with the 40,000 frontage or area requirement within the R1 district. The lot that's in the R2 district complies with the 20,000 square foot frontage for that. What we would propose to do is build this plan. This is the flexible open space layout. And with this flexible open space, what you'll see is you'll see that the areas in green we're proposing uh, as the open space component. We're proposing an open space here, um, 272,000 square feet of that 78,000 is uh, upland area. The access way is generally the same as you'd have with a conventional subdivision, but we're proposing a reduced width right of way, a reduced width roadway. Uh, it's a little bit shorter in area. It's approximately 190 feet long. 
would provide access to the four new lots. Uh, lot one is the existing house. Lots two, three, and four are the new houses. Uh, for all the drainage with this, because of the topography, what we were proposing to do was uh, provide swales along the edge of the pavement to come down, and then we would have um, some sort of overflow with a catch basin device to a recharge basin at the rear of the property. Uh, the soils here are excellent for infiltration. The swales will provide TSS removal uh, along the roadway. As stated, the green, we've provided a open space buffer all the way around the perimeter. Uh, so we have a, a no disturb buffer zone against all of the abutting residential properties. We're maintaining a buffer zone along Country Way. The only area we're utilizing along Country Way here for our access is where the existing access for the house currently is. So we're maintaining the um, basically the view of what you'll see when you drive by on the Country Way roadway. Under the bylaw, Section 550, we're required to have a preliminary meeting with you prior to doing our definitive filing. That's the purpose of this is to uh, get your feedback preliminarily on the layout, answer any questions and uh, any comments that you have so that we can address them and incorporate them into our definitive design. Thank you. Laura? The purpose of this section of the bylaw that this uh, development is being proposed under uh, Section 550, flexible open space, it's to preserve the natural and cultural resources of the town. and. I think when you hear that, you think of some kind of grand plan, but actually, you know, you're really just dealing with a small piece of land, so it's it's on a somewhat small scale. And this property does have some resources. It has a house that was built in 1710 or 1720, you know, according to you know, different sources. And um, if they do the flexible, it looks like there's a better chance that would be preserved, which would be you know, a nice thing for the town. And the flexible also allows a lot of open space to be preserved. I'm not sure if you want to look at maybe having a little more preserved on the south side. Um, there's just a little thin strip there. Um, maybe there's some way to plant that and make that you know, more of a buffer. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's um, something that's going to be important in the ultimate scheme of things. But it just looks like there are you know, several butters on that side, so it might be, might be a nice thing to do. But, Basically, it looks like a good, um, a good choice for this piece of land. Okay, Richard. Uh, so yeah, my question, I think you kind of answered it, was just that the uh, the intention is to preserve the house on lot one. Well, right right now we have it so that the house would co would comply with the setbacks. It it is in pretty tough shape. I can't guarantee that we're going to keep it. Um, but it does com it would comply with all of the setbacks. I think we my applicant just purchased the property. I don't know if he's done a thorough analysis on whether or not it would come down or not. It, the property also has a new septic system that was recently installed, and that can be preserved as well. That's the leaching field over to the on my map, kind Correct. of down to the left. <laughs> okay. Um, the other question I just had was I know for a lot of these flexible open space. Um, plans we have a public or uh, a community uh, component as Laura mentioned you know the preserving the open space is a huge factor but are there any other ideas that you've explored about like for a trail or I, I mean I don't know what this connects to or if there's other if you could actually have a trail back to that area or um, a sidewalk I don't know if this actually is in the area of the sidewalk <coughs> that's proposed for country way is it Laura I, no, it's farther. Too. It's farther up towards Shelby's. So, yeah. So I guess Beyond Cudworth Road. <clears throat> my my thought was that obviously I think you know having the flexible open space, preserving the land is a huge benefit. Um, I just was curious to see if there were other things that could be incorporated that wouldn't be too crazy, such as potentially a trail or a sidewalk. Those types of amenities we've typically done in the past for these kinds of developments. The, the current proposal doesn't have any trails or sidewalks in it just because there's no sidewalks along Country Way. But I mean, I, I think we'd certainly be open to maybe doing a trail through the open space pieces of this property, something we could probably incorporate fairly easily. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any other particular questions. Dan? Yeah, that, that was my main question about the uh, public access piece of it. And I'm not quite sure what else is in the area. I think most of that area behind the property is wetlands and restricted and that. So it may be something that like long term could be tied into something else. I don't know what else is there right now. Probably not much. Um, but I'd like to preserve that opportunity anyway. I'm not sure about putting in a trail right now or just making sure that when we approve it, we make sure there's a public access component public to it maybe yeah. in the future to do something with it. And then at the end of the cul-de-sac, the crosshatch green area, I'm not understanding, what is that? The, the circle? That's, that's area within the cul-de-sac or within the right of way that in the flexible open space scenario um, wouldn't be developed. So basically if you look at the... Oh, I see. Okay. You know, in a standard subdivision, we'd have to clear all the way up to the outside of the pavement. Over in this scenario here, we're proposing a hammerhead turnaround. I see. Oh, okay. So it preserves that much more. So it's just for calculation. Just for calculation. Okay. That was, and that area is currently vegetated as well. That makes sense. And you're, and you're showing, um, I guess, the house on lot four is within the hundred foot buffer. So you'd have to go to Concom and deal with that. Yes. These, these are all, and you're showing. These have the septic fields. I see. So that one's in front, outside of the hundred foot. Yeah. All of the on lot all, four. Yeah, all of the septic systems are outside the 100-foot wetland buffer zone. Uh, you're right, a portion of the house for lot four is in the 100-foot buffer. Uh, typically, conservation has a 50-foot no disturb. The project complies with that 100%. Uh, all of the roadway is outside of conservation's 100-foot buffer zone. Okay. I, I guess on that one, I guess when we get to that point, I just want to pay attention to the drainage and everything in that area and the drainage plan. And make sure that's really well thought out with the driveway and everything and try to minimize that as much as possible. But um, I don't see an issue with it. I mean, it looks like a nice plan. So I think the public access, we can maybe talk about more what makes sense. I'm, I'm not, not positive based on where it's located on Country Way that even if there were a trail there, anybody, anybody would use it yeah. versus just preserving the opportunity down the road for some, you know, master plan of that open area to come in and put something there in the future you know that's more what I'm thinking of because there's nowhere to park here and yeah, in, the, right. in, the, in the grand scheme if you zoomed out this abuts on the back piece here the um, bonger zone land which is essentially a lot of it's all undeveloped land off of Williamsburg Lane right and so you know it, it is part of a bigger piece that's behind us yeah and a lot of that's restricted now I think so I mean maybe maybe when you come back in or maybe we could look at that maybe in an aerial of what else is there so we get a better feel for what long-term opportunities might be there sure. yeah, that's all I have Thank you. yeah I think that's a good idea if we could see a little bit of a, a <clears throat> sort of macro of this area and also uh, include houses along the southern property line even if they're only located from the uh, tax assessor's map just to get a feel for how close they are where their backyards are relative to your property and the, the proposed clearing that kind of thing even just like a google earth or something yeah, like that absolutely. zoom out yeah. yep. you want to see it good to see <laughs> what's that i said you want to see it right now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh you, you electronic that? genius <laughs> yeah. no no uh, uh, no, I think it's a good plan, too. Um, I very much like the idea. I know what you mean about the house. I've looked at it. Um, it's a neat old house, but it's got, it's in tough shape, yeah. Um, the barn's kind of neat, but that's in tougher shape. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, I think basically this is a good use of that property. I know that several years ago it was, um, a, a subdivision similar to this one was proposed on this on the uh, on the land um, yeah. But yeah back back in 1989 this the situate planning board did approve a three lot subdivision on this property it was never constructed right mm -hmm. um, but you know a, a couple of other things I just want to point out um, and I'll, I'll submit these calculations this letter for the record but you know under a conventional development of this property you look at we would estimate we're going to have approximately 31,000 square feet of impervious under a conventional layout. With the flexible open space, we're down to just under 20,000 square feet. So it's a 30% reduction in impervious surface. Uh, that also goes with lawn surfaces as well. 
uh, under a conventional layout like the plan behind this one uh, we calculated approximately 120,000 square feet of lawn just because of the larger areas and more disturbance with the flexible open space will be around 83,000 in total so it's that much less fertilizer that much less uh, disturbance sure. it's pretty much a 30 percent reduction in impervious surface and clearing and lawn surface mm -hmm. so. Up here and then we'll Bill, uh, I just had one other question, and I don't know the answer to this, but is is this um, a common driveway in any in any sense? The um, the roadway itself, you know, would act as a common driveway. It's not a common driveway that would have to be permitted under the bylaw because technically Road A is a, is a right of way. Okay. Uh, we thought about the option of filing for lots two and three having a common driveway so you don't have two driveways right next to each other. Yeah. Um, and we may incorporate that in the final design. Yeah, that would cut down your impervious somewhat. And um, at least if that happened um, as it necked into the main roadway, it would be a little bit less uh, asphalt, you know, all in one yeah. place, which might be a nice thing. Absolutely. Uh, um, Fit, fit, or if you decide not to do that, it might be a good idea to slightly reconfigure it so that there's a, a reasonable island between those two driveways that could be planted out. Yep, we'll take that into consideration. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Um, just uh, in, in terms of the open space, particularly the strip along the, the sort of south, I guess that's southeast corner there how wide is that that's a 10-foot strip that's a 10-foot strip and it is it an intended to be like a uh, a uh, strip that you would maintain or is it I mean no, I think it's a strip that we would try to leave natural I think uh -huh. that southern property line there for the most part is a uh, is an old stone wall and then we'd, oh, leave, we'd leave the natural vegetation you know within 10 feet of that stone wall mm -hmm. I think that might even be 15 feet wide we could enhance that area too if it's thin in areas. It just looks like a pretty small little. St I mean, obviously yeah. the scale makes yeah, it a, looks like look like that too. But yeah, that's actually right. It's a 15 foot wide. <coughs> yeah. so. and, and I, well, I kind of mirror Robert's comments here about the two driveways. If you can do something with those, because it does look like you've got a couple of uh, you've got two strips of asphalt side by side there the other thing is and you'll probably have to address this with the Conservation Commission is the other driveway looks like it comes into that hundred foot buffer area so to the extent you can stay out of that or minimize that impact sure but uh, I think overall it looks like a, a nice plan it'd be nice to get more buffer on the, on the south side but I suppose you're probably limited by the uh, by the buffer zone on the wetlands too. Yeah, on the north. Yeah, with with, with the lots, <coughs> primarily the lots are right around the twenty thousand square foot area, so mm -hmm. you know I don't think we want to cut them down much more for fitting a house plus a septic and a reserve. Mm -hmm. But um, but we can certainly look at maybe reconfiguring some of the shapes of them and, and look at the buffers. We can look at that more. And the drainage still exists down at the bottom here. This is gonna be a uh, a basin of some kind. Yeah, some sort of planted basin. How close, looking at Google Earth, the, the, that street that's the cul-de-sac across the street, is it Black Rock Terrace? Black, Black, Beach. Black, Black Beach. Beach. Black yeah. Beach. How close is that to the, what you have as opening, or it's, the uh, entrance? It's, it's directly across the street. Oh, it is, you okay. Line those intersections up. So it looks like there's a house there that would have, or a garage that would have there's to be a, demolished. Yeah, there's, there's a, a barn. barn. It's an old barn. Okay. Right here that's, yeah, pretty tough. Okay, so you were right. That is that's the house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do the grades work out? Um, do you have to clear cut this, or can you leave some trees, depending on, you know, what might... For the most part, the, all of the area proposed for the road is already cut. It's already clear cut. It's kind of maintained as field, so I right. don't think there'll be any yeah. clearing for that. Um, right here. Yeah. Back, back in here where the houses are, we'll be cutting for the houses. Mm -hmm. But 
But you for, the, for the actual road construction, all of the area that we're working in is already cleared. Okay. And, so this, and you don't have to markedly change grading throughout the parcel to, to get things to work? I, I don't think so. We might have to um, provide we'll a little bit of a area at the top. Right. You know, just yeah. At the intersection. At the street. But otherwise, yeah. everything's yeah. graded yeah. now. Driveway. Real nice yeah. drainage where we want it to go. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Obviously, my efforts to stealthily steal my target is <laughs> <laughs> You should have grown um, smaller then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just have one, one little question, and, uh, and that's the, the hammer heads turn around at the bottom of the cul de sac. Yep. Um, that's the one that's going to have any issues with that in terms of accommodating their apparatus. Well, we'll, we'll certainly do the, um, the auto turn calculations to show that, that Situate's apparatus can fit there but that's basically the same layout that you know has been reviewed and approved before with like the dream wall the states development that was just done here you know, 2003 2004 so we'll we'll revise it as necessary but it's pretty close to that layout all right and it looks like the top of that I mean not the the green part of the cul-de-sac which would not be built it would be the, the hammerhead like directly, at least according to this, it almost looks like just beyond those trees is the other, the neighbor's pool. Yeah, that's yep. why we really want to preserve that area yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I was wondering too if maybe in the front of the site, now that we're seeing it on Google Earth here, there's a lot of, it looks like large mature trees in the front and along the sides, and I wonder if there's a way to maybe expand the open space a little bit to capture some of that, maybe follow the contours a little bit more of what's there now, assuming they're in good shape, I don't know. Yeah, there, there is one that I, uh, I'm pretty, pretty confident that we're gonna preserve that's you know, probably in excess of 36 inches. So we'll be able to preserve that with this type of layout. Yeah, just wondering if you could actually expand the open space outline though, you know, come in a little bit from the, the country wayside and then also we're talking about the south, you know, the strip there's a way to kind of maybe capture some of that natural vegetation expanded a little bit into those areas. It does, I do see how it's cleared now around the existing house and it mm -hmm. doesn't look like most of that driveway. It looks like the clearing will be towards the back of the site or the, um, Correct. yeah. Do you want are, to there, are there mature down? trees along that strip? Yeah, you want to take a look at this? There are a couple, yeah. Because yeah. that's one of the concerns that I have is that I think the open space would not only provide open space, but I'd like to see it as a buffer, maintain as an, an existing buffer there is a, a fair yeah, number of trees the barn, up that's in the, the front, house, right? and I really didn't get a sense because I didn't walk down in the back as to yeah. how many there are along that open yep. space. But this, is do like, this is the house, right? Yeah. The house is right. Oh, we're on the wrong side. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Right here. Uh, it's over here. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. There's the pool on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So there this is where they're side. this is where yeah. they're proposing coming in right here off of yeah. this. Yeah. Let's bring it Lined back up to with Black Beach. Okay. That's my brother in law's house right there. <laughs> that's why I know so this place. Coming back so that's the concern so that I, I have. This? <clears throat> Rather than making it a straight fifteen feet, if you can make it irregular as it goes along, just so that we maintain the we maintain the existing buffer there. Um, the other thing is I think that you, I wonder, I'd like to see the Make sure the fire department is satisfied with it because I, it, I'm not sure how far it is from where the the shaded cul-de-sac is down to the bottom of the house, but it's yeah. probably in the neighborhood of 600 feet. Yeah, from the from the cul-de-sac to this house back here is 260 to that corner board. Um, there's one hydrant out right at the corner of the property on Country Way will obviously extend one down. So I mean, typically the planning board or the Fire department yeah. is within 500 feet. We'll be at 260 with this layout. Okay. Yeah. So as long as as long as he's comfortable with it. And then yep. the, the comment about looking to see whether you get a shared driveway or a common driveway, I think would would, would really go a long way. And I think obviously I think it'd be cheaper to construct, and I think it's less impervious and it, it utilizes the site yeah, better. This one's right in the front here, like the the, the building, the existing house that's up there. I think it's 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 an existing house, and I don't think it's much more than that. It's a pretty, just from the exterior looking at it, it's a pretty tough shape. I haven't seen it. I haven't been inside it at all. I have, actually. No, I haven't? Yeah. I think that's pretty much where I'm coming from. And I, I think there's plenty, uh, it's kind of the comment I had was on the uh, site distance, but I don't see that. 
don't seem to be a problem in either direction. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem in either direction, but we can provide the You may just want to just check that and make sure. Are you so, talking on country way? Yeah. 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 Yep. But my concern is that you're up at the point where it's, it's the narrow part of country way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're leaving a lot of vegetation there, so it might. There's a little bit of a bend as you come to the south. Yeah. The country way bends around to the, to the west a little bit more. And then I'd be concerned about the size of the, the basin that we're putting down. I, I don't want to see another Elm Street. Neither do I. <laughs> I mean, it, it's literally the only thing difference between that and the football field is the football field stripe. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you can do to minimize that, and if it means you know doing something and treating the drainage is is just coming down along that sure. roadway or whatever, that would be a, a preferred way of doing it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Anything from the public? Okay. We'll be going in front of conservation, you know, to solidify that wetland line, and as soon as that's taken care of, we'll be making our definitive submittal to you. So Terrific. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for working on it. Thank you. Good. Look forward. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. was so anxious to move to the other side of the desk. <laughs> How are you? There's a large okay. screen that we can put up on the back so that when you... So that we know what we look at. Yes. No, so when he's <laughs> Googling Earth, then we can... Oh. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. Oh, is that the one? They'll have this right on their desk. They have a yeah. technology screen. Oh, yeah. No, they do that in Wellesley, too. Every, nice every member has, a, has their own yeah. laptop. Provided by the town? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get to take it home. You do get to or you don't? No, you don't. I, I, don't, I suppose if you're doing town business, you could. Yeah, I mean, it's, why not? <clears throat> we have a digital projector here, don't we? So we, yes, yeah, we, so we, we could write, you know, we could yeah. project right there on the, on the wall. Yeah, particularly if we have wireless. <laughs> Well, Richard, is there wireless okay. here? Let's go, Richard. There is, but Laura won't give me uh, access. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a permission. Don't you need, you need a password to get log on? Yeah, on? yeah. That went away with our keys. Okay. I'm now going to call at 8 o'clock. The next item on the agenda is the public hearing for accessory dwelling special permit for 33 Garden Road. Here the applicant. Reintroduce yourself. We haven't seen yes, you sir. for about a month or so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is John Townsend. I'm with Sand Castle Group. I'm here with my customer, Mr. Martino, who's the owner at uh, 33 Garden Road. a chance to take a look at it? Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, changes have, have obviously been made to the plan to um, um, at the suggestion of the board and, and, um, and the neighborhood to attach the accessory dwelling to the existing structure as you see in the rendering there in the bottom and also in the top. So I'm just going to go through some of the particular, a lot of the particulars really haven't, um, you know, changed too much as far as the uh, square footage and things of that nature, but I'll go through them to refresh the record on that. Um, this, the size of the accessory dwelling is um, 31 and a half feet by 23 uh, feet 8 inches or 745.6 uh, square feet. This thing, um, structure is approximately uh, 1,090 square feet, finished space. 
deck size on the proposed accessory dwelling has been reduced to nine foot five by five six, a total of 52 square feet. Um, as you know, the customer, uh, Maria, has submitted an affidavit confirming that she will occupy the property. The existing parking on your site plan showed on the, on the uh, right hand side will remain. That is approximately 83 feet long by 10 feet on average in width. The width does vary. It goes back towards the garage. Um, the new parking accommodations are on the uh, left side of the proposed addition. And uh, that parking area is 55 feet long by 12 feet wide, um, which can accommodate up to four cars. <coughs> The existing home is three bedrooms and one bath, and the accessory dwelling is two bedrooms and one bath and is on town sewer. The proposal has been reviewed with uh, the building commissioner, uh, the DPW, Water Health Conservation, Water Department, um, and the other pertinent um, departments, and all have uh, responded favorably to it. Um, but, um, the proposal itself is designed to meet the criteria and the purpose of uh, 53, uh, 530.1, 530.2, and it also meets all the required dimensions and regulations of the zoning bylaw as far as setbacks are concerned. Um, the, um, as I mentioned, the, the plan and layout have been amended see there to show the um, accessory dwelling being attached uh, to the existing and I think that clearly addresses the concern that was voiced uh, at the last meeting or with the previous um, submittal for this accessory dwelling project I would like to say that we have um, had distributed letters to um, the concerned parties that um, were at the initial meeting for this property and, and to you know discuss further and I think decided to take that opportunity for, for tonight. So uh, that if you have any questions for myself or Maria. We're all set right now. Laura? Uh, this is a uh, the application, the first application was submitted in June and the applicant would do it in August. about how these structures really worked with, with the lots in terms of some of the bylaw. Um, some of the criteria in the bylaw are very kind of objective, like the 750 square feet, two parking spaces. Other criteria are more subjective. Um, the bylaw wants the accessory dwelling to be designed so the appearance is you know, they say unchanged as much as feasibly possible from the original. And I think the way the way that's done sometimes is by orienting the building so that if there's an addition, it just sort of blends with the house. It's the same style, you know, the same, the windows are in the same plane, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then there's also a uh, criteria that the accessory building be a that part of the single family dwelling, and that's another one that's really subjective. It's just something that the board has to make um, a judgment about. Um, so I think, given that the, the primary dwelling is only a thousand, a little over a thousand square feet, and the accessory is you know, almost 750 square feet, they're, they're sort of comparable size. It's, it's kind of a challenge to do this. Because you guys have been involved in this for a while, and 
I'd like to hear what you guys have <coughs> um, been talking about. Laura, did you say? Did, did I hear correctly that the uh, the main the main structure is about a thousand square feet? Yeah, the. Um, well, I, I believe the assessor's card says 1,090. Okay. Well, as I read 530.2 sub F, it looks like as big as you can go is about 400 square feet on your accessory dwelling. Am I missing something? There? You can go. It's the greater of 40% or 750, I think. That's right. Yeah, I, I confirmed that with. Um, and, and are you at 750 then right now? 745. 745. My, my other question is, uh, you know, hearing what Laura had to say is that um, I, I would like it, and I don't, it may be what I'm looking at is just sort of, uh, you know, an aesthetic kind of a thing, but, uh, you know, I, I see the original dwelling has got one, two, three, five windows across the front and a door, and I see two windows. It, it kind of looks, pardon me for saying this, but kind of like a shed that's been attached. Um, I, I don't know whether or not there's something that could be done architecturally to make it look more like the, the other building or to, to sort of uh, you know, incorporate it in a more pleasing way. Um, but, but that's my, my and, it, and it is, you know, it's as big as you can go, uh, clearly. Um, but those, are, those are, are my thoughts at this point. Um, I guess one of the things I'd ask would be, is there going to be, or do you contemplate work on the existing building as a, a part of the project? Yes. The, um, the existing tenants in, in um, the existing building have been notified that, um, you know, they're just to um, find other housing, mm -hmm. and the plan is to uh, build the, uh, if approved, the accessory dwelling so that Maria can renovate the existing uh, structure and also you know, bring it up to um, the, the newer quality that the, that the addition will be. Good. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's important. I, 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 I appreciate what Eric says. I think you've got to remember, though, that this is one, one view. And as you see this um, coming down the street, for example, you're going to pan around it. You're going to see the, uh, the perhaps more attractive end of the, 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 the new addition and then uh, a different view of the side of, of the house. Um, there are Isn't that the street view? It is, but as I say, as you come down the street, you're not standing in one place. You're sure. going you're gonna to pan around that entire yeah. um, three-dimensional house. That yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's other views actually in the Yeah, I, I actually saw those, yeah. Packet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. I agree. That it looks a little stark um, from from that initial view, but I, I think it would be somewhat less stark. I mean, you could flip the plan over and get uh, more glass on the front, being the, the living room facade. But it's a question. Um, what's the intended entrance point? I guess where are you going to come into this? Are you going to actually use for, for both both units, which doors are, are likely to be the real used doors? Do you the, think the primary? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The primary um, door for the accessory dwelling would be the one adjacent to the living room and kitchen on the left-hand gable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's where the driveway leads to. Mm -hmm. And for the existing, uh, they would use the uh, their current entrance, which is um, right in front. Off. Right the, in the front. Yeah. Okay. Secondary means through the connector. Yep. And yeah, I think so at yep. this point. Could you flip it back to the other yes. view? Yeah, I guess the comment about you know looking at the front of the accessory dwelling. I mean, part of this is that it's supposed to be clearly <laughs> subordinate to the main part of the house, so. In, in a way, when I look at it, it does sort of look like an attached garage, which I think is actually good because it does make it seem more subordinate. My comment is going to be more towards 
maybe making both of the windows in the front small and maybe putting more landscaping there and possibly um, consider rotating it um, to have less width on the front. Um, but I mean, I, I think it's much better than before when it was detached, it looked like two houses. And this, and the, you know, the connection makes sense because if you had someone, you know, an elderly parent or something living on one half, you can go in between the two. So it, I think that part of it makes a lot of sense. And that's sort of the intent, I think, of the accessory is to have those possibilities for um, alternate types of housing and things like that. So I, I like that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I guess it's a push and pull between what do you want? Do you want to fulfill this clearly subordinate part? Or do you want it to look more architecturally pleasing? You know, if you make the front look just like the other house, it's going to, um, you know, not be as clearly subordinate to the rest of the house. I, I tend to, when I look at it, I guess, I, I tend to wonder if we should maybe consider, um, see the connection that the kind of breezeway between the two, if you push the whole thing back so that it connects to the other bedroom, you basically you push the accessory dwelling back it goes back into the backyard more it would um, get it that much further from the street and make it look that much more subordinate I don't think it would affect your plan very much um, I mean I guess it would a little maybe you flip the bedrooms or something or, yeah. um, but if that's what we're after is making it look more subordinate you could push it more into the backyard that way um, but, but I think, you know, the dilemma here really is that, you know, under the bylaw you do, you know, the greater 40% or 750 square feet when we're dealing with a small house like this, it's going to be hard to make that disappear. 750 square feet, there's only so much you can do. Um, I think that's the, the design change um, was, was really to uh, address the concern that the, that the neighborhood and the board had about um, it looking like two small cottages on yeah. two small lots. Um, you know, there are a, a lot of lots with um, small cottages built on it, mm -hmm. the size of, of half of this lot. However, what this does is it, it makes act, you know, does make the connection, I think, very similar to what the board had, had recommended the last time and even kind of sketched up. Um, and uh, the, the fact that as, as Laura had mentioned, that the existing home is is so small, really, you know, creates a creates a challenge. But yeah, I, I mean, that I guess looking at it, um, I can't tell how close the house is that's right behind where the accessory dwelling is. Is it how close is that to the back lot line? Do you think? I, I guess what my question is: if we if we decided to push the accessory dwelling back, is that going to be worse off for the neighbor directly behind? Or is it better to keep it where it is and preserve have, that buffer? I do have a plan that shows. Looks like you got Yeah, the, the house. Um, it's the. Uh, directly behind the. Ex the Fuller, Fuller house. The Fuller in, house. In, right. Number th number 32 is, is actually kind of justified closer to Holly Road. Um, this is the old plan, so I don't pay attention to this, but it shows the. Oh, so it is the, quite a bit. Right. This one is right up. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, so there is some room there. I, I mean, I guess that's what I lean towards, although I'm not, you know, super strong on it either way. But if we're going to do anything to make it more subordinate, I think I would make both of the front windows small, like the one on the left, because then when I look at it, it looks like, oh, someone added a two-car garage with a breezeway attached, you know, driving down the street. It's going to look more like uh, accessory to the main structure and potentially pushing it back that much further. Yeah, the trouble with doing that, Dan, is that you're going to get a bedroom or, or a room that, you know, could be a bedroom with only a very small window. And I think, actually, by code, you need a certain amount of open sash so that you can escape out it if there's a fire. And certainly, aesthetically, if you're actually going to live in that bedroom, you want a, a oh, really reasonable size window. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying, because we've like got a big bedroom on the yeah, back. Yeah, that's a small bedroom. It's less than 10 by 12. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't. I don't think that's a real drawback. I don't mind the asymmetry. Yeah. I mean, you might. You might make it a little less jumpy by putting a window in the bathroom, basically the same size as the one you've got in the kitchen. I guess so if there's you two similar windows there. You know where you put the, you put a window in the bedroom number two on the side of the house. 
small unless, enough. Unless you slide the house back so the breezeway is engaging that the bedroom. No, I, mean right, point. I mean right here. Right, but you're going to slide it back so the breezeway engages. No, I'm saying without doing that now. Oh, we're slide okay, it back. Okay, if we yeah, abandon that yeah. idea, because I, yeah, I can no, see how that's could. not going to work now with unless we rotated or did a significant change. So. Well, I, I, I but, would still honestly But say I think that. it's, you know, it's an aesthetic thing. I mean, if you want it to look subordinate, you do less on the front. You know, if you want it to look <coughs> nice, maybe you do more of what Eric's talking about and make it match and make it look like one big house. So, and I, I'm, I guess I'm not strong either I, way I, on I, I like the idea of moving it back because it certainly does, you know, re reduces the massiveness, you know, because of the, the difference in perspective from the street. Or if you rotated it, I guess, but that creates all kinds of new design issues. So I don't know if we need to get into that level That's of detail. It's relatively square, that is it? It's uh, yeah, it's about seven foot difference, like 23 by 31. So you, you gain seven, f you know, you lose seven feet of width on the front. Mask, just the innate size of it either way. You yeah, it's not a huge difference. And you wouldn't want the gable end certainly facing the street. You don't yeah. want to have two gable ends facing in the same direction. But at least from that view, I mean, it does look like a garage addition or something from the street. And I, I think that, to me, fulfills the subordinate part as much as you probably can, unless you try to put the accessory truly like directly behind the house or hit it, which mm -hmm. on the site plan I, I don't think makes a lot of sense. It kind of ruins the backyard. And so that's, that's all I had. Richard? Yeah, I think I echo some of the other uh, comments. My first reaction was, well, gee, maybe, like Dan said, if you rotate it at 90, or I was even thinking maybe if you just took it and squeezed uh, a little bit from the, the left side so that it becomes not so linear. Because then that was my first thought was that, you know, comparing the existing house to this uh, addition, um, it just, the addition looked almost, I mean, from that, I know from that view it looks a little bit larger, I, I agree with what Bob's saying is though you probably wouldn't see it from that particular direction. So, but in, in general, I wanted to say that, you know, light years better from the last proposal. Um, it certainly does look like one structure. My only comments would be maybe a few tweaks if you could, like I said, um, maybe take the, and I don't know if it would even work, but to thin down that linear front elevation portion so it wasn't quite so large. I, I don't know if, if you, like I said, if you brought the left side in and then actually increased the back a little bit, whether that would work in the floor plan or not. Um, the other option I just that you guys mentioned, maybe having the, I thought the window, the small window in the bathroom was also a little bit strange and maybe like having the, the same as the kitchen is a good idea uh, for consistency. Um, and those were my main comment. Oh, my other comment was just, I thought it was a little bit weird that the breezeway, it entered into the bedroom, but I know that, again, you're under tight constraints. <laughs> so, I mean, those were my main um, comments, was just that maybe with a little bit of tweaking, it could actually look a little bit more subordinate. And that was, as um, Laura said, I think it's really subjective on what does subordinate mean. One of the things I notice is the dimension on uh, front to back on the addition is practically identical to the existing house. So if you have the same roof slope, which I assume you're going to, you'll end up with the same ridge height, which is uh, not sure what you were after doing. So that's, you know, that's basically a good idea. What's that? Yeah, no further comments. Questions from the public? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> introduce, yourself, introduce yourself and then. Susan Elias, I'm at number 40. looks even less subordinate to me. I believe the dimensions of the width of the uh, accessory dwelling is actually wider than the current dwelling. So to me, it looks even bigger, uh, less subordinate. That's the right way to say it. Um, that's one of my comments. The other thing is, um, one of the criteria were that the building was not um, the building remain un the appearance of the building remain unchanged as much as feasibly possible. To me, that's quite different. I mean, that that really changes the look of it drastically in my mind. Uh, again, it looks less subordinate to me than uh, the first plan. And then there were a few small things uh, that I felt were. I mean, maybe I'm nitpicking, but with the regs, one of the things says the new exterior any new exterior stairs. Uh, are not on the, should be on the side or the rear of the house. And um, 
they're not. It seems to me now that by putting that breezeway thing in there, that now you have the stairs in the front rather than the side over here. Yeah. Pardon me? Well, the stairs are already no, the there's a set of stairs here the into the existing yeah, under the breezeway stairs right. that, that are existing, and then the breezeway encapsulates that, and also the entrance into the uh, accessory Wait, dwelling. The that breezeway, the breezeway right? stairs. No, no. There's a there's like mud room there's here. A there's a there's a little a set of bump off with a set of stairs, right? Well, so it's really just it, the same. Be converted to a breezeway. Just moving, it, moving the around the corner of the front of the door. Yeah, it's so those are existing stairs. Well, the um, the, there are stairs placing existing very close to that location yeah. right now. Uh, my other question was, um, is it still under the 750 square feet? According to what I measured, when you add the um, I think the original plan was 66. I think Mr. Townsend said 52 or some square feet for that breezeway area. It seems to me that the dimensions of the house in that breezeway exceed 750. It maybe I'm you know just not doing the math right. The 52 square feet was in reference to the rear deck. The breezeway area is outside of the of the um, footprint of the accessory dwelling and is 66 square feet. But it would be a new structure, so I mean, isn't it part of the accessory dwelling? It leads to the bedroom. I mean, to me, it's more attached sort of to the accessory dwelling than it is to the other one, especially if it leads right into a bedroom. So I just, you know, I say when I did the map, I came up with over 750 when you count that area and the house itself, the, the, the new accessory dwelling. Well, I mean, if that's an issue, she she could build that as of right, and the, the any approval the, the, could build be that and build it in right. The section one. I'm sorry, what was that called? He, the point that he was making was that he could, as a matter of right, he could build the the, the, the connector, if you would, right, and he could build that and then come in and then build the accessory dwelling. So that would. Be so, cool. so basically, it's not really part of the accessory square foot that we have to count. It's more of a design issue. Right. I mean, you're so going to need two building permits anyway, conceivably, right? Yeah. One for the renovation and one for the new construction. Right. Absolutely. So this could the breezeway could be part of the renovation. Yeah. So it's really not a square. It doesn't violate the square footage, the way it is now. I I thought that was part of you know the new. Uh, but it's still a design issue. You could still say you know why do we need the breezeway? You know, it's it's a design issue if we think that makes it not subordinate enough or. We could look at it from that angle. Yeah, and I guess the whole subordinate thing still um, bothers me because uh, by turning the house, rotating it, the width of the new dwelling is wider than the house. So as you drive by in, in appearances, it looks bigger to me. I mean, when I look at those schematics and those photos, it looks bigger, and in fact, it measures bigger. So those are all my comments. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think that was what we were talking about. If there was a way to, I get, it's going to be hard, but if you could skinny up the kitchen and living room and go back a little further, but I, th I think based on these dimensions, there's not a lot of room to do that. So that's going to create it's pretty right. small it's already. Problems, I think. It's 14 right. feet, so I mean. Good. Other questions on the public? Comments? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, Nancy Larkham, I'm at 38 Garden Road. Uh, first, I want to thank the staff for the help. Uh, we we uh, looked at files, and um, we also took um, the list of all approved uh, accessory dwellings since uh, bylaw was passed, cruised around Situate and looked at them. We actually looked within our own neighborhood as well. Um, and we really didn't see anything comparable to this. And despite the breezeway, which is really a covered breezeway, it still looks like two buildings. Notwithstanding the 1,000 square feet for the primary building and the maximum of 750, it still looks like two buildings on two, on a very tiny lot. And with the addition of the driveway on the either side, it also contributes to it looking like two separate buildings. It looks like any condo a duplex you've ever seen. And you might say that it looks like a garage, and that was my first impression as well. But if you go to the other side of the house, it has a very elaborate entranceway. So it, it does not look like an addition. And at the last, hearing for the last application, there was an awful lot of discussion around making this attached, making it look like one building. 
And as we looked around at different things, especially the two properties on Fay Street 25 and 24, they look like larger homes with the accessory dwelling, which is attached to the wall, not just a thin little breezeway, um, which doesn't seem to me, at least the suggestions that were made by the planning board at the last meeting, and certainly what the abutters could um, you know, enthusiastically support. So that was um, you know, a major concern that we had. Um, We don't really think that the suggestions were incorporated into this plan. I mean, there was a lot of talk about a wall and having a wall, and unless that's what you all meant, but that we expected to see something quite different and more in keeping with what we saw in other prior approved um, accessory dwellings. I would also add that you know, if this kind of a model is approved, um, it would it appears to be one of the first. And this has implications for all of our double lots on our street, of which I think we have eight. So that eight people could do exactly the same thing. Now we've got double driveways on these small lots entering the traffic flow. Those are the concerns that we have. Um, I think that's all I have to say at the moment. Okay. Next. <clears throat> okay. Um, I just want to reiterate. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara McFadden. I live right next door. Okay. Uh, 35 Garden Road. Um, Mr. Monger last time said the bylaw is not meant to be a way to have a second house on a lot. And that's what it is. It's two houses with a breezeway. It's clearly two single family houses on, on a lot that's 10,000 square foot and is supposed to have one single family house. What we said as a neighborhood is if she wanted to move her parents in or all the other reasons that people ask for a special permit, um, that would require something really different than that. And um, if she wanted to put an addition on her house, an addition which would be much smaller square foot than 750 plus the 66 for the breezeway, uh, to accommodate that, we would be fine with that. That's what we were saying. We weren't saying that we approved putting two single family dwellings on a 10,000 square foot lot because in our neighborhood, um, it, would, it would be disastrous. And nowhere, we, we drove all over Situate. I look back at the records um, for all R3s uh, since 1992 when this by, uh, law was passed, when the new zoning thing happened. And nowhere did I see anything on a lot that small with an accessory dwelling that big that wasn't like already a, a footprint like a carriage house or a garage um, that was completed or something. Uh, this is entirely different than anything that we looked at. And we tried to find, we, we were really interested when you all said additions with this common wall, we thought, oh, let's go see what that looks like around here. And it doesn't look like that. And, and I'm very upset about it. <clears throat> Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Jean Briette from 38 Garden Road, if I may. These are the next street over. I don't know if I can share these with you. Faye Street is one street over, and there are two houses exactly opposite each other that you approved in 2005 and 2004. And I think this is what we were talking about, is this is the main house, and this is the attached, and it really it has a shared wall. There's no breezeway. It really does look like an accessory, you know, a, an, integral an, an integral part. And this is sort of what we were expecting to see, and it fits in our neighborhood. These are right next door, the next street over, and they're opposite to each other. Mm -hmm. so, so this is an accessory. Yes, this is. Yeah, that's an accessory, and this is an accessory. Mm -hmm. so this is the main. So be like taking the angle. Like good size. Yeah, th this one is good. This is a triple lot, actually. This is good size. So this is that plan eliminating the breezeway, basically. Yeah. Yeah. One of those is a 16,000 square foot lot. I think way. some of the reason we think this looks so big to us is I think that the breezeway pushes it out. And I feel like if it were adjoined with a common wall as we talked before, mm -hmm. it would appear much smaller. It'd look like a single. It would yeah. have an integrated roof line that would make it. Mm -hmm. And one of those properties is 15,879 square feet originally when they put the addition on, not 10,000. Yeah, and if I could repeat something that was just said. Um, when we last met, and there was a lot of talk about making it look more attached, and talking about a common wall and soundproof walls, there were lots of good suggestions. So we expected to see something more like those photos and 
something closer to what was discussed at the last meeting. This doesn't look like anything that was discussed. And at the last meeting, we said we could support, as a neighborhood, we could support a plan, you know, that had a shared wall that truly looked like just a bigger house. And this doesn't look like that to me. Anybody else? I just want to add why there aren't as many of us here tonight, but this is the second night in a row that our lights went out on our street. Oh, no. Oh. So <laughs> I think that's why I'd be here. So in, in no way should that um, infer that there isn't the same feelings for the group that was here the last time. And I, as you can see on the letter, we even had more signatures. So we do feel strongly about this. Um, in addition to that, I think the issue of owner occupancy still remains very much a concern for us. As I looked at the files in the planning board, I didn't see anything where there wasn't a sitting owner at the time that the permit was granted, except when it was a brand new purchase, um, and I think there were two of those, brand new purchases or brand new renovation. So I am concerned that the applicant plans to live in the house. We, we just don't see that, and we're concerned about what will happen if indeed that doesn't take place. And um, it was mentioned, I, I went back and looked at the minutes, it was mentioned at the last meeting that should the applicant not reside in one of the units, that the special permit is in, in, it's, in violet? Yeah, we actually put it as a condition on the okay. permit. They can't have the accessory dwelling unless part of it's owner occupied. So you wouldn't need to worry about if someone's living there or not. If no one's living there, the owner, then they violate the permit that we grant them. And then what happens? Well, then it would be a zoning enforcement action, and they could. Oh, there is. I, I yeah. couldn't. You know, we, we tried to do as much research as we could, and we, we couldn't really see um, what would actually be the repercussions of that. There was some discussion around taking legal action that, that we would have to take legal action. No, it, um, yeah, it'd be like anything. It'd be a violation of the permit that oh. we issue. Okay. It, okay. I mean, we put right in all of our accessory dwellings. Yeah. It has to be one part has to be owner occupied for it to be valid. And if it wasn't and it was discovered, then it would go to, I guess, to Neil first, right, as a zoning and then enforcement action. Violate the special permit. And so oh. you could actually remove the certificate of occupancy from oh, the accessory. A, and yeah. Thank you, because that was a question. Um, that thank you for that clarification. I also saw in one of the um, approvals. I think it's fifth fifth app. Um, they're asked to every year come and attest that they still live there. So I, I did see that kind of information added um, once okay. things were approved. I don't know if we've done that on our recent ones or not. Have we? Well, was it we put that right in the? Yeah. That was right in the decision. They have to annually three fifth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that well, we could certainly continue to do that. that I, I also sense. want to say because there was some mention about us not supporting the bylaw. In fact, we do support the bylaw. We have actually an accessory building with a mother and daughter in the in the neighborhood. And when I went back and looked at the files and looked at the letters and saw as people wrote their purpose, clearly people were living there, want to stay, have to build in-law apartments, need a little extra income. They're long-term residents in the home. And so we do support it. We just don't support this project the way it's being presented. One, it's rental property where I don't think the applicants ever lived in the house. And then secondly, that it looks like two separate buildings. So that's, so that's been our concern. Can I, can I correct that? I actually have lived in the home. I don't know, Barbara, you had actually you hadn't lived in it. So I have lived in the house. Five um, years ago or something. But, right, because I yeah. went back to get my, well, should my life be put out there. Um, I actually moved back in with my parents so I could finish up my degree. I finished up my degree at the time I was working for a biotech when I purchased a home, and obviously a biotech salary is a little different from the state salary that I'm currently making, um, which is one of the reasons why, in order for us to do this and move back into the home, is to, I mean, it is what it is. And I think as a single mom, I, as a divorced mom, I am trying to raise my children in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I think that I'm working my tail off to make that happen. And, you know, just a little bit discouraged um, that that's so, not right. But it's, it is your intent to live in the house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And actually, right. I had a um, conversation with Mr. Duggan on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and he reiterated and explained and said, this is what happens, and, this, and he said, did you sign an affidavit saying, and I said, yes, and is that your intent? I said, yes, I live in situ. My parents live in situ. Like, my parents are elderly. They, yes. And I don't think we have to get into that anyway, because it's a condition of any yeah. permit we would grant anyway. It's, so it's, it's, it's already been submitted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's a move one. Mm -hmm. Does excuse me? Does the application um, 
is it submitted like under one of those five purposes, so to speak? Like, is there a stated purpose of one of these five that this app plan is? I, I think that I think the purpose it's not, but I mean the purposes are really pretty broad. It's meant to capture a lot of things. I mean, like one of them is so general. I think it's pretty easy to fulfill the the purposes. I mean, one is just to provide a variety of housing. Yeah. So I mean, oh, it's to the residents affordable housing. No. no, this isn't an affordable accessory. Yeah, this residents. is a regular. So like, oh, work, work, so work, so like, you know, it could be sort of addressed any one of these purposes, and one just says to provide a variety of types of housing to meet the needs of residents and workers. So it's it's drafted very broadly. It's very easy to fulfill the purpose. We don't have to say you have to do it because, um, you know, you're maintaining it for a parent or something. You know, it doesn't have to fit into one of those boxes. So. And that's May I, may I address that? But, it, but if the intent were to, like, you know, if the, the intent were shown to be, you know, they're going to rent out two separate ones and not live there, then yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that, been our concern. If it's something yeah. like that, yeah. But, uh, but I think, you know, we have an affidavit. She said she's going to live there. It would be a condition that the permit actually would be illegal if she or the owner of the property didn't live there. Then they could shut down the accessory part of it. So. And does that language kind of stay with the house in perpetuity, so to speak? Yeah, it's a permit. It's a, actually a permit for the construction that deed goes with it. So yeah, it goes, goes on the deed. It's registered. But I just, I'm just concerned that eight people on our street can say they have a need to be able to stay in their house, and so they want to build a whole other house, just like it next door, but they'll put a little breezeway so they can rent it out, and, and it would. It, it's. I think the intention of this law was. Um, not for that. I think that um, if it was a tiny addition or something on, in our crowded neighborhood, that would be one thing. But I, I really am struggling with how somebody can just build another house when the bylaw strictly says you cannot do that. Because that's what it is. She's building a second house with a breezeway. She's going to be able to rent it out. Um, and I just, I, I think it's a mistake because it's, it's setting a terrible precedent in our block alone. Okay. And we're in a very dense part of the community anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Your, point, your point's been, okay. let, let me chip on. And then, I, I guess when we saw it before, and we kind of sent it back to the drawing board, what I envisioned was to see something, at least in my mind, closer to what was on Faye Road, or Faye, than what, what's here. It really is. If I look at the breezeway, the, the, the connector, this is what I call it. I mean, I, I really have to almost come in, close the door to open up the second door to get, literally, if I'm going to go into the bedroom, or even worse, if I'm going to come in and go the other direction. So effectively, I've created this, this breezeway, which really is, is almost a non-utilitarian function, it, it basically, other than connecting the, these two structures together. And that's that's problem that I have. I still have two houses that are connected. I think if, if it were on, on Faye, it ends up they've got a common wall. That's kind of what I expected. So I see it where I've got, because you get the opportunity to, to, where they're basically literally the same width and sit there and have, have a common roof structure that, to bring them in so that it would match with similar as on Faye. And that's at least what I was expecting to see when it came back in. I wasn't expecting to see basically a, a you know, two-bedroom unit that has a, that has a, <coughs> a way that basically connects it to the existing house. And, and I filled around not, not to the extent of uh, the expertise that Bob has, but in that or Dan, but to, to shift it back to see maybe that made it, you know, more palatable. But I really ended up, I still have this breezeway. What I need to do is to squeeze them, to, in, in my mind, I got to squeeze them together to get rid of the breezeway. So that's, that's kind of where I come down. One thing I was thinking about is if you took the accessory dwelling, shift it back so that it aligns with the current dwelling, and then basically the roof line of the accessory dwelling comes over completely and uh, is basically does a hip into the existing dwelling. So what happens is basically because it's shifted back, the roof line actually becomes like a covered porch for that entry into the breezeway. So therefore the entire accessory dwelling roof structure would go sort of seamlessly as a hip into the existing 
would that look more like an existing house? I don't know if that makes sense. It would, but it would space it out <coughs> even more is so that I think it would look like a large, it would look even larger than it does now. It's, it's going to yeah. look ridiculous. I don't think you need the breeze, I don't think you basically need the breezeway. I think you're right, Bill. Mm -hmm. If I, could I just interject one, I, I think there's a, a couple comments and I, I think the, you know, the size of the lot was not, is not really, in, in my mind, the, the question. I don't think anyone was, was saying that the lot was too small to do an accessory dwelling. Um, I, I think what we're seeing is that you know, I don't see, I don't have the pictures that you have in front of you right now, but those are, you know, you, larger homes that have accessory dwellings attached to them, probably around 750 square foot uh, size, and really what you have is... 750 and a larger... Like on a larger area. building, yeah. attached to a larger building. And I think really what we have is, is that... Um, Actually, Maria it's has, not one... If, if I can, Sorry. please. Um, if, you know what we have here is, is that because the existing building is just over a thousand square feet uh, the um, the owner is being you know punished in this in this sense uh, because the accessory dwelling even though it meets the criteria of the bylaw appears to be larger um, or as large or too large for the lot or for the building and I think that's really what we have to you know be careful with because it I wouldn't want to, you know, see Maria be unfairly punished because the existing home is small, which is what I, I'm getting the sense of, not just. But if you put it together with a common wall, yeah. that would eliminate the breezeway altogether. Then, then you've got a common wall. And if you wanted sort of like a mudroom breezeway thing, you could put it behind the house, you know, if you still wanted something like that. You could well, I, I just, I, I think what I want is, is uh, you know, and, and I obviously uh, need to need to speak with Maria about it but I you know some assurance that if we're keeping with the criteria of the bylaw and I think we have from the very beginning I know that there's concern about it and I know that there's the size of the existing home makes things very difficult but as long as we're keeping with the criteria and the standards and the dimensionally the requirements of the bylaw um, that you know Maria can get something approved here that um, that helps her family out because that's what you that's what we're trying to do we're not trying to do anything that's that's outside of what's allowed and, and um, the, the question really is just the subordinate piece of it that is one of the criteria so right right you can Someone's meet it dimensionally standard. but still not meet the other criteria so that's yeah. where the breezeway comes in and it's also where the size of the existing structure comes in right no I mean, no that, I mean the size isn't an issue so yeah. I mean, it's really not. It's the subordination component. Of no, I mean, if that yeah. breeze were existing now, we could still say we don't want you to connect there. We want the accessory behind it because you'd end up with that result, which if we're saying we don't like that. So it's not, there's nothing to do with the existing size. You still can have your 750 square feet. It just is a matter of placement and how it looks from the street. You know, if she had a, you know, I don't know, I guess. If she had another 500 square feet on the house, it still would be this similar issue. Yeah, so is there any technical reason why you can't eliminate the breezeway and shove the entire um, accessory dwelling toward the main dwelling? I see you'd have to remove one window in the living room. You'd have to push it back in order to leave windows in yeah. the living room. Because right now it looks like it's aligned with the second window, so it'd have to be pushed back a little bit. Did you and then you'd uh, the window in the living room, and then the door, and there's a window in the kitchen. Did you see these pictures? Oh, I, yeah, I just took a look at them. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, so I guess was there a is the, there the, a, the, the purpose of the to clear both windows? Yeah. Right. Well, the two re you know the reason for the for the breezeway in addition to to the connection is to is it's a utilitarian space i mean it it provides access to the to the basement through the bulk you know through the bulkhead area which is the door in the top left the existing um, secondary means of egress from the existing home remains intact and connects into it and then um, it allows a pass through to the rear yard and and you know so it really accomplished all of the egress requirements that were you know that were needed we've got a small, both buildings we've got a small room essentially with four doorways going in and out yep that's right 
That's right. The bulkhead is in that sort of space in the upper left. Is That's, that what you said? Yeah, that would be a. Uh, it wouldn't really be a bulkhead in the classic sense, but a, okay, a so door like to a ship's, ship's stair going down. stairs down to the correct. But there is a stairway going down to the basement in the yeah. right. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the uh, accessory dwelling. Yes. Okay. Not one that you would want to drag a weed whacker or a lawnmower up or anything. <laughs> I don't know, to me, it, I like the direction of the conversation that if you eliminate the breezeway and get something <coughs> more like Faye, it takes care of the subordinate issue for me. It seems like a design issue that could be clearly dealt with with a little bit of work. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's about a schedule looking over your shoulder here. That it needs to be shifted that far back. <coughs> if it was shifted back so that the front of it is where the, the front of the addition at the front of the accessory dwelling would be moved back so that the front of it is in line with where the breezeway is now? Well, I don't even think you'd have to move it that far back. I mean, the other nice thing, too, I suppose, if you did push you it together, it you could do nicer things on the front elevation, too, because it would look more like one house. Yeah, you could put yeah. the, the same size windows. Same size closet. windows. And I have to ask Bill. I don't know if they get into residence. I think it'd be an improved street view, then? Um, you know, if it, I can see a yeah, lot of things that, that, that could happen. You could, you could still have a small breezeway, but what you'd want to make sure is that this eave line carried over and the ridge. So the breezeway would be oriented vertically instead of horizontally, yes. if you want to say that. Yep. Um, so you could still have an entryway there um, of, of one kind or another. But if that, if the main thing I think is like if you took the yes. roof, though, of the accessory dwelling, and just made sure that it went all the way over and connected right. into the main and dwelling, right. then that would look more like a part of Addition. the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the breezeway, what really makes it look like a duplex. Yeah. If, you, for if, sure. you shifted, if you shifted the accessory dwelling back and rotated the, the breezeway so that it is, is, what, 90 degrees from where it is now, that in effect would allow you to carry that same roof line all the way through. Yeah, carry the same roof line all the way across. So then, then it's, it's and keep it narrow, you know, keep it like four feet so yeah. you don't add too much. No, basically just a, just a door in door. Take this, move it this way, and, and bring the same same layout up to it. So, so the door, so the, this you're saying that the second <laughs> egress out of the existing kitchen would remain? Yeah, it would be about where the steps are, where that little mudroom is now, basically. You know, the breezeway would be an extension of the existing mudroom. And it would, so it would be would pull up to here. on the plan page. It would it would be oriented vertically as opposed to horizontally, so it didn't have to space the the new addition out. But then this would be pulled back like this. Pulled back the roof line like would this. carry all the way over. Then. You know, the other thing that would, that would look better on this would be a hip on the addition, like like that. That would be yeah. Because you don't have a big high gable now that you're looking at this end. You know, you've got the same um, even though this. And maybe it would be, make it look more subordinate too. Yeah, it would take. It would, it would cut down the roof. Yeah, it would make elevation. It would, yeah, it would like fade the roof down on the end. If you if you ran the eaves of the new addition all the way around at the same elevation, instead of having a gable end mm -hmm. on this left hand side that I'm looking at, um, you'd you'd make that end of the roof. You'd clip it off and make it a hip roof on that end. What does um, that would that would really decrease the bulk substantially. It will almost look like an extended dormer in a way, a very large right extended here. dormer. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just hit that. Right. Oh, but then that. You'd be, you'd be amazed how less bulky it's going to look yeah. if you do that. You'd have, you'd have a roof this way. You could maybe put the skylight in that. Okay. If, um, I mean, I, I think we have a, a very positive design solution that we can work with is it something I could we could draft up quickly and and send send sure. to you well, with a continuation continue, of continue, continue this yeah then you can, you can work on it but as I said I think that would work out I think that would work out well I mean, 
And so I think there's, there's support for what you're trying to do. What we're trying to do is to figure out how, how it fits. Mm -hmm. And you've got the unfortunate thing that we've got a very small lot of size. That you're basically trying to put two relatively good sized components on. And most of the accessory dwellings we've got are, are much either a larger, larger lot or, as was pointed out, it was either a carriage house or a garage or, mm -hmm. or and that, and it was an addition. So you're somewhat a pioneer, I think, in terms of what you're looking to do. Not that that makes you feel any better. Mm -hmm. But I think I think I think there's an opportunity to do it, and I think there's you know you know it's either sliding it back or changing it to a hip roof or, or come back up and, and making changes to the, the breezeway. I think you know I think there's a lot of ways that you can come back and do it. So I'd like to ask the neighborhood, like if we did those or if they, in good faith, if they did some of those changes that we're discussing here with like rotating the breezeway and bringing the the roof line over. Would that be acceptable to you as far as a um, design aesthetic? It would be to me, personally, if I understand what you're saying. So, like, the breezeway just sort of wouldn't be there from the front when you looked at it. There might be a big, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, we're actually looking at now, say, maybe narrow. a smaller one, a very small, like about half the size it is now. But the roof is going to carry But the roof through. would carry all the way around. There's not going to be any notch between the new roof and the, and the uh, existing. Yeah, the roof would look like on this one. It would continue so all the way across into the other one. This is what we're comfortable with. That yeah. Be it looks like I think we can do that. And in fact, this one has a hip roof on the end, so it would be much more of this look mm -hmm. with the hip on the end and a continuous roof line across. Can you, which, what address is that? Uh, I don't know which one is this. Is this, oh, this is Fay Street. Fay Road. That's Fay Road, Fay Street of Road, next Fay Road. Oh, they're both, they're both labeled Fay, so. One's 24, they're opposite. One's 24 and one's 25. They're opposite corners of the street. Yeah. And where's, where's Fay relative to Garden? Oh, okay. 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 So I think that the closer you can get to this look, I think the happier everybody's going to be. The one, the one on the other side. So I don't know. If, is this something you need back, or do you? No. And, and see how the windows look like. Okay. I just have. I mean, I don't mind that. Questions. What is what? What is the staircase in the in the new accessory dwelling? Where does that staircase go? Down the basement. So it's a full basement. Yeah, it's a full height basement. Yeah, full height basement. basement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I also want to say that I think the board wants to be, make everyone happy and a good compromise. I mean, we want to support Maria. We definitely uh, understand that, but we also want to make the neighborhood happy as well. So I think we can come to a good compromise here for everyone. I, I, I agree. Say, yeah. I mean, we probably sound like we're being negative, but um, we definitely can support it. Just a plan that you know looks more like the ones right. on Fay Road, and that's kind of what we expected to see. Um, I echo the chairman's comments that it's still kind of as it is. Looks like two separate things with just a little attachment. You know, we thought it would look more like the Fay Road. I have a total shared wall or something, mm -hmm. which we you know said at the last meeting. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I would support it. And the primary building will be renovated because it certainly doesn't look anything like the new one right now. So well, that's the intention. Yeah, that's on right that's yeah. the yeah. intention. Yeah. Okay. But that's, that's a different permit? Or that's <coughs> yeah. been separate from this? They're going to get yeah. a rehab permit for one half, and then they're going to get a construction permit for the other okay. half. Yeah, there's no requirement that they okay. do anything yeah. with the primary, no. so. Okay. Uh, could I ask the gentleman from San Council, did yes. you mention you sent us another letter? No, it, after the for the initial meeting. Oh, okay. I, I believe I, I got say, everyone on the list. Yes, yeah, so we hadn't seen this. I, it, we hadn't gotten it, so we were just concerned if you had said you sent us something else to come review this beforehand. We didn't get it, so we no, just, just the, the, fir the, oh, the first. Oh, right. okay, yeah. I misunderstood. So let me ask this question: When, how long do you think they would take you to pen it? I probably have it for you on Monday. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, Monday's I, I a, Monday's a holiday, so you can take it till Tuesday morning. Well, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're going to move the two buildings together. Just that's so I'm clear. When we're that's what the intent is: is to come back up and clear. Okay. move them closer together. Look for a common roof line that basically. Because right now you've got sure, disconnects. Keep you've got a disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. This, this this turns uh, 90 degrees. Uh, very similar to what you did with the folded what, page. Do we have time on our next agenda? Uh, we're already kind of full. No, I mean, you can't. No, no, no. Shouldn't. I think they're doing two a month. Um, yeah, we can. 
What's at 915? Uh, right, so we got, we got the sidewalks, sidewalks first. What do we have after the sidewalks? After the sidewalks, we have the um, uh, JW pizza uh, takeout. Okay, so that's the site plan. Then we, I threw in there some kind of a discussion about um, what you all want to see the department and yourselves do for the next year because we really need to start thinking about that for the whole budget process and you know, just our own internal planning process. So we can do that. If we do that after, we could put them in after, at. And we can put them in, in that spot. So we can put them at okay. eight. That would be um, that would be eight thirty, assuming a half hour for the pizza takeout. Eight thirty. Uh, that would be the what? Oh, the the twentieth, right? The twentieth. It's a WPA building. It's a Tuesday. We have an odd schedule yes. during the holidays, so yeah. And it's also at the WPA building, um, which is in the North Street. North Street. Is everybody going to be attending the meeting? Yep. Yes. So I will not be. No, you're getting it now. Okay. <laughs> November 20th, 8 November 20th. November 20th. November 20th, 8 30. 30. WPA. WPA building? Uh, they'll be available as soon as, as soon as you, you public. I can bring hard copies as well and leave them at the, at the, Planning board office. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know what the, Okay. And we're at the WPA building. Where is that? North Sichuan. It's where the um. Is that new? What kind of, kind of visitor court. center building? Stone, right? building, stone building in North Sichuan. Where the T parking oh, lot is. Yeah. Where is the that the yes. yes. It has Good. <laughs> <laughs> Probably as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's some things you could do, but I think you're getting there. Really. You're getting yeah, pretty agree. close. I mean, other yeah. than like hiding it behind the house or something, which isn't going to work with how close the no, lot lines are. I mean, it clearly, if the main house were bigger, it would seem a lot more subordinate. It's just hard to do with the square footage. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, I think the goal of subordination is is you know a, a good one but in fact it's as important that the entire composition look like one and I think this will achieve that so it's going to look like a single larger home right. I agree and I think if I mean if money would, were no objects you could put a large addition on the existing or tear down the existing and replace it and then do a you know what I mean right that would be by right you can build a house this size on it right. it would be yeah. the same effect aesthetically as you you know look at it from yeah. the outside right but yeah. from a massing standpoint it would make it yeah. worse so I think you know. no I mean this I think this is as what we've talked about is to me uh, you know about as good as this can get and I think it's going to be pretty good yeah. it'll look like one house I, I think that's primary objective here is absolutely yeah I think so okay so what we're going to do is at the applicant's request and you'll have to fill out a little note sure. tell us that but um, at the applicant's request we will continue this hearing until you need to take it yeah but we will oh, okay. we gotta lay out the ground rules of what we want for motion <laughs> or let's do this I need a motion to continue at the applicant's request to uh, our next meeting at 8.30. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's, it's at the WPA vote. Yeah, and I want to comment that just thank you for both the public and thank you for the applicant for will the willingness to work together. Appreciate it. And you guys have my number, too, if you don't. Yeah. If you can't get it. Can we keep these? Yeah. I, I think she Thanks. can. I, I live there. I see it all the time. <laughs> 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 That may be from this view. I think next time you need to send us a video. <laughs> can, we take, can we take a five minute break? Thank you. John, not that it matters a hill of beans, but what did you use for the, the, the software to do that?
about how they had excessive yeah. dwellings yeah. that they'd built and they'd come <laughs> down. And the next item on the agenda is, is endorse an additional they bylaw for registration for Two Bailey's Island. Yeah. Right, that's just, it's a tool spot. Thank you. I'm Richard Henderson from Henderson and Henderson and Carras and represent Ellen and Nicholas Nichols. Who owns Bailey's Island? The form A was previously approved, but it's land courted property. So the land court department had to review it. It is identical in every respect, except there's, in terms of boundaries, frontage, there's none of that. What the land court asked to have three things. They asked to have more markers, boundary markers between the dividing line. Um, they found in the certificate of title a chapter 91 license, so they wanted the dock depicted on the ground. And they found on the certificate of title a uh, New England Telephone and Electric Company easement from the 20s and they were at the 50s, I guess, and they wanted the overhead wires depicted. So the only thing that is no difference in the boundaries, the plan they approve, it's only more detailed in that it has wires, a dock, and more monuments in the ground between the lot lines. Otherwise, it's already been signed. So almost done with this. So <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, right, Laura? I, I think it's basically the same, same, the same plan, but I think some of the The, the detail. Are the yeah. No, the lot lines are not. No, it's the the only thing that I know of are these are the documents they requested from me. This is the doc that's chapter 91 license and electrical um, easement and the monuments. They are, they're just in the ground. So did they add the easement to the? I, I mean, to the drawing. Different. I think there was a there was a little bit of, of um, change in some of the um, the configuration. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have it. Well, they, I think they might have wanted the description. Cool property. Bailey's Island. You can, this is a letter of the land code for the easements. You can have it. Okay. Uh, so that, that represents what needs to be signed? Yes. Appreciably the same as what it was before. Yeah. The, the only thing I knew about, that there are, the overhead wires are shown. Um, the dock is there. That's it, and then they put they put they wanted more pins between the lot lines. Mm -hmm. well, why don't we just have a motion to endorse the form, right? Maybe uh, Laura already has it. Yeah. Okay. You, so what's the difference, Laura? Well, well, let's hear. What's yeah. the difference, though? You're saying there's another yeah, difference between the lots. I'm going to let Karen just subdivide. The parcel is about a thousand square feet different. This is about six hundred square foot different. So we're going to have and this is about the same, but substantially the acreage is the same on this one. This went from three point one acres down to three point acres. And the part, this was six thousand. So I think it's because they put the they central line. The, yeah. They may have changed the, right. the, that. I think because of the harder geometry, mm -hmm. it, it changed. But and this parcel is not buildable anyway. I see. Right. So no. right. So and these have plenty of square footage it's, and it's very, it's, acreage. Yeah. Right. These are. Okay. So I don't see that that's really any no. substantive okay. impact. Way down at the end of Indian Trail, going out into the marsh towards Oh, yeah. Okay. Not, do I have a motion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do. I, I and before the motion. Oh, you got it right there? Yeah. Not that it matters a hill of beans, but I, I've said that twice tonight. Um, I saw on a map that this easement was oh, called Nebraska Lane. I was just curious if that was the case. <laughs> Remember, I once, sent you that. Once upon a time. I know. All right. Got a motion coming up? Oh, I see. This is All right. The island, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I move to endorse as approved under the subdivision control law, not required, a plan of land in the town of Situate, Massachusetts, located at 2 Bailey's Island, prepared by Cavanaro Consulting for applicant Eleanor P. Nichols, dated July 31st, 2012, as the planning board endorsed a similar plan on July 26, 2012, and date 9 11 and this plan is conceptually the same except for the required information for recording in the land court has been added. This information includes additional drill holes and bounds set resulting in the square footage of lot 3, lot 4, and parcel 5 having minor changes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, sorry? Okay, that's fine. Right.
Can you my special Mylar signing pen? No, what, how much more are you? I, I sign Okay. So That's fine. Get, I'll bring a check tomorrow. Just tell me. Tomorrow, are you open? I mean... Yes, until 11.45. Okay. Just kind of, okay. Well, I'll, I'll sign the day after the meeting, Richard. You can pick it up tomorrow. All right, fine, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Richard, just quickly, the the driveway, was that ever called Nebraska Lane? You know, I honestly don't know. It might have been. It, it's, um, we went back to 1927 at the land court. It's been there for a long, long time, but I don't know if it ever was named. Why? Was well, I saw on a map, and I sent the map to Laura. I zoomed in and sent you a picture because on the map off of Bailey's, what's I, the cause, or Wood, Wood Island, Island Road, Road right. was this little tiny lane called Nebraska Lane, but it's really the driveway. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's been there. It's been on the ground. Um, well, it hasn't been on the ground for long. I went back to 1927, and I, <coughs> it started popping up in the 50s on the plans, but it never had a name on any of the land court plans. Right. So. Well, it could be an error in the map. So, yeah. Richard is from Nebraska. Oh, really? Are you? Yeah. yeah. So when it popped up and I saw it, I said, oh, this is a cool place. I actually drove out to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't there. There was no <laughs> corn. You're supposed to build it. I'm asking if they'll consider naming Richard it now that there's. <laughs> <laughs> there's we'll All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is discussion for release lot one, Dreamwall Estates. Minute early. Introduce yourself and tell us what we want, what you want us to do. Um, I'm Richard Henderson again, representing Mr. Tedeschi, and I was representing him for the bank, but so far we're not closing. But in the course of the uh, title examination, um, of course, they sell the special permits, and also the purchase and sale agreement had some contingencies that is a condition of closing. Mr. Hogan's home, which is the original house on the site, which is within the four corners of the subdivision, but is a pre-existing house with pre-existing utilities and a pre-existing access, but it was still covered by the covenant. And if he was selling the rest of his land, he didn't want to be involved in the subdivision process, and he made a condition of selling the rest of the development to Mr. Tedeschi to complete that his home not be part of the subdivision process. So. Um, we're not asking for releases on anything that's undeveloped. Uh, there are, there's progress being made in terms of utilities being put in, but we are asking that Mr. Hogan's lot be released, and he does have access, he does have utilities. Mr. Tedeschi has a covenant in his agreement that he cannot interfere with access during the construction of any part of the subdivision, cannot block access to his home, and um, I think John told me it's a matter of how many hours before from t start to finish to upgrade the road? Uh, well, the road's well under construction. Um, I started last week and I've been doing, you know, seven days, 12 hours a day. And I have the road all, um, <clears throat> it's all uh, stripped down, the gravel's in place. Um, drainage has, has been put in, um, bounds have been put out back. Um, I, it's a common driveway, but unfortunately it falls under the uh, flexible open space, so it actually does fall under the subdivision rules and regulations. It's essentially a common driveway. I have a plan here. Unfortunately, it's a working plan, but if anybody would like to see it. Um, so they, I, I have an existing conditions plan as well. Um, this gentleman, Mr. Hogan, actually has Lou Gehrig's disease, and he's, got, he's really challenged on how to get around and everything. Um, he has a, a walker that he uses, so it's really sort of a um, just a, a touchy uh, area to work, and I'm trying to uh, not impact his life at all. He has a driveway, and the driveway is actually um, located where the road will be built. So it's what I'm doing is lining it up to where I'm going to disrupt his driveway for 24 hours mm -hmm. to strip out the, uh, the old driveway and actually bring in the gravel. Um, just just so he's not really interrupted by it. Um, but again, it's such a small project, or you know, to, in in my perspective, that to pull a bond, it's it's just it's ridiculous. It's they're, they're so difficult. They take months to get. Uh, they're very costly, and, and uh, in the two month period, I can actually build the entire subdivision and have it base coated. At that point, then I would come in front of the board for lot releases and we'd come to an agreement on the amount of money that I would put into an account or a letter of credit or something of that sort. 
So this is a depiction of Mr. Hogan's home, which has always been here. This is his back land, and this is what Mr. Tedeschi has agreed to purchase, the roadbed and the rest of the land. These are, there's a, um, a drainage lot and an open space lot, both of which will be for the benefit of the town and be open space. But this is the house as it exists today. What's the existing driveway? Is that yeah, it's that's, it's I have, the, it's I, the I have an existing I've plan. A couple pictures that's a very deceiving this is, um, plan. The pavement is where his driveway the, is. Right, right, right now, here. Is over here. here. I actually have an existing, ones I took. existing condition. I mean, that's my <laughs> only concern is just the access, you know, sure. if we release it that he's got sufficient well, access to the house. Here is, I think the existing condition plan is probably the best to look at as far as what exists now. And I also want to show you, Bill, you were on the board when this, this was approved back in uh, 07. 06, actually. Or 06. <laughs> This, this is the driveway, and I have not disturbed this area just because I want to do it in a 24-hour period. Not to this, this is his house here. This is yeah. his house here. Now, if we go to, uh, again, um, I'm sorry about this working plan. It shows, it shows a layout of a subdivision here, but that was waived, and it was for frontage. If you look at the highlighted areas, it's just a common driveway for three house lots. And you can see his his uh, driveway is this right is, here. This is the picture, right? Yeah, that's that's the end of the pavement. Um, this is about. Um, that would be right. Here, right. You all have the existing conditions. We'll show exactly. Right on the back of the garage. So, so he's giving you an easement across the. No, it's it's a subdivision though. It's a to that plan. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Right? Yeah, but how to build a road. <laughs> this one is, is kind of a, um, on a fast track. Um, right. It, and it, and it, it wh is. what's happening is, I, and I was a little concerned, I think I sent something around to the board, Mr. Hogan still owns this entire property and he's living in Florida. So just to make sure everything he's not was... Living in Florida. He's not living in Florida? He's no, living no, no, right no, he's here? He's living here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. He didn't go to Florida until the winter and he also gave you a letter that I have permission to do the work out there. Yeah, that's what I was just going to tell the board, that we do have a letter from him that all of this is being done with his permission. Right. Um, so and we're he having did. the... Oh, so um, he, he owns the whole... He owns the whole the entire yeah. parcel, correct. And, 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 correct. and, and, the, and, the, so and John... Gonna, I'm sorry. What we're going to do, they want to release lot one. Okay, so they basically then he can continue on. Right. We can't have a closing until, until lot one is released. The rest of it. Right, kind exactly. Of. He lot one being his lot. Right, his yeah. home. Yeah. Okay. He will not sell the land to John and finish unless he knows he's released, so his home is free of the. Because he's going to be div the divorced from the process and the responsibility. Oh, John is buying not only the land but all the liability to finish the project. <coughs> so yes. he can't close until. I have a release. Right. Release. That's yeah. there were other conditions that we're going to have to waive because we're never going to be able to accomplish that. I, I mean, I don't see an issue with it. I mean, for one thing, he's got frontage right on wall too but in addition to the driveway so it's not like I mean it's meant to protect people from buying a lot where they don't have access or utilities and that's not the case in any scenario no. he fronts stream walled so mm -hmm. okay. I don't, it's not an issue for me it's not yours existing structures picture taken or last week uh, that's one that Jerry Preble took oh okay right 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 well that was actually an inspection for the gravel since then um, there's this basin here and this basin they're both done um, and the road's filled with gravel now, so I'm, you know, I'm only a couple of weeks from uh, base coat of asphalt. So yeah, I, and I, I have am a, on a fast message track. from Jerry too to please call him before you do all the work so he can what? go out and inspect it. Oh, absolutely! I'm not missing okay. any inspections. Okay, I would I never do that. <laughs> 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 so, well, you all set? Yeah. Thank you. So we have, I am. Um, we have a motion. Okay. Thank you. What I did is I, I took your statutory covenant in there, book, and I deleted the one dealing with. Substitution security, and I just took the lower part and made it up. I have four copies. I don't know if it's acceptable. I think Laura's got her own motion yeah, already yeah, ready to go. Um, okay. well, we had talked, uh, let's see, we're just going to kind of cross out the second sentence here. Just go with and the first part. Just to be completely open and honest, because John is a neighbor of mine, should I recuse myself, or does it matter? Well, um, 
Yeah, I guess it's something to think about at the beginning, but now. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> okay, I, I just as as well, I'll just make that anyone. public. We'll hold it right. that I'll make it public. My, my understanding is it makes a, a difference if you're a neighbor of the property in question, not necessarily if you're a neighbor of the applicant. Unless okay. There's some business relationship, but just wanted to be open about so, it. But yeah, it's yeah. good to disclose, yeah, okay. but I don't think it matters. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I don't. I didn't really think it did either, but I wanted to be honest and transparent about it. All right. <clears throat> I move to release Lot 1 from the Dream World Estates Covenant dated October 26, 2006, and recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds in Book 33715, pages 62 <coughs> through 65, signed in connection with the Dream World Estates Definitive Subdivision approved by the Planning Board on June 23, 2005. That's it, right? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, Have a nice evening. Um, you too. Do we need to sign anything to release those lots? Um, yeah, we do. <clears throat> I guess you'll see me in a few more weeks, but the other lot really just blend the work. There's a couple more vacation days left, so give me a call and let me know when you're coming. <laughs> Stop by any time. <laughs> What's being built on those other lots? Well, you know, I'm I'm hoping that smaller homes get built. They were laid out for very large. Yeah, they look pretty, pretty big. And everybody seems to want. Do you have a duplicate? Let's get a second one if we actually stood. I'm I'm doing the infrastructure. I'm a builder, residential builder. Mm -hmm. One for us and one for you. You're Bill yeah, Richards' house. Yeah. 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 And, and Susan's your wife, right? Oh, yeah. Susan's yeah. your wife. Yeah. 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 What, yeah. What's your last name? Oh, oh. She, she, told, she sold us our house. Okay. Oh, did she? Yeah, 22 oh, man lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah small nice world. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't but, uh, sure the second page. I'm trying there's to. There's a notary. Uh, I'm going to build We're going to we'll hopefully buy all. We'll have three. your signature. Yeah, I'm trying to promote the idea okay. of the Boston style. Uh, they, they the old yeah. Oh, good yeah, for you. Absolutely. Yeah. The old with with the yeah. Queen yeah. Anne Queen Anne cape. Yeah. 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 And smaller. Nothing yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, nice. It's, it's a nice piece of property. It it was actually perfectly flat. I couldn't figure out why, and did a little research, and it turned out it was Lawson's uh, horse racing track. I've seen photographs. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody's telling me about that too. Yeah. They used to have big. Oval there. The yeah, which is kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. And you can they, still see they stole uh, my some pen. of it from the train. <laughs> you ride the train. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. see the. I used to actually bank. play on that track when I was a kid. They they was, yeah, the concrete pads for the stables and stuff. Whoops, we're still there. The whole thing back yes. in the fifties. Yeah. How's Robbie doing? He's doing great. Excellent. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Sarah, uh, got a job with uh, Hingham. Uh, She's teaching in Hingham. Yeah, yeah, and she just got a uh, a long-term substitute job, too. She was kind of part-time, but now she's, she's going to be full-time after the first of the year. So that's that's real good. Uh, Robbie is not having that much um, luck yet, but he's got some. <laughs> he's got a lot of irons in the fire. Should I also pick that up tomorrow? Or is your, okay, all right, great. Thank you again so much. Um, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Show up so late. That's, that's it for you this evening. You're off now. I am. Well, no, I'm not. I'm done here. So. Okay. I'll <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pick them up tomorrow, John. I think. Oh, okay. That's yeah, we, we need to know that. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Say hello to Susan. Yeah. Hi, John. Hey, Not a I didn't lose it. That's the next item on the agenda. What's this? Is that something we're supposed to uh, do? That too? goes with that. That's the notary. Oh, okay. Right. The next item on the agenda is the letter of support for CPC for Scenic Road Signs. You can get the application that Laura put in for that. Look good to me. I had a question. It looks to me like I've got contingencies upon contingencies. That's, that's oh, you mean, uh, you mean contingency money contingency? Yes. Um, I don't have it sitting in front of me. But we've got one. It's like $8,900. It has a contingency. Yeah. Um, there's the, the 8900 and that's 
That's based on one estimate that we got, which yeah. hopefully is still going to be good next that's June. That's and, um, that's and that's Can I? Let me let me show yeah, you exactly. Sure. Where it is. Yeah. No, I, I think I think I know what you mean. Um, it where it goes up to, to 12 and then it yeah. goes up to 16. Yeah. Well, it's it's not like that money's going to be, you know, well, going anywhere if we don't need it. It just goes back into the CPC. It says... And, and I suppose we, we could trim it. It just seemed like... Um, yeah, so we're, in we're, this, yeah. this part, it's there and it says that the, the basically the per sign or each blade is like 80, 89.65. And then... You came back up with the total based on the number of signs you're going to have is 8965, 8965. And then for contingencies, 12,500 is requested. And then it comes over here, it says total project cost, 16,000, 12,500 requested. Well, what that's all about is that right now the DPW was saying that they'll provide all the poles and all the hardware which actually comes to about $3,500 for all those signs. But in case that doesn't wind up coming through, we wanted to allow for that. And then we got it to be to be that. So, so you, what you're looking for is $16,000? Yeah, I mean, in the CPC pot, you know, that's like, no, I, don't, I don't want to call it a drop in the bucket, but it's, it's a pretty small amount of money. 47 signs, that just seems like a lot of money. It just seems to be the contingency. No, it's a hundred signs. It's a hundred signs. But it's 47 locations. It's about, it's about 47 locations, yeah. but you have to do a double monitor, yeah. and then you have to put them in the town, town lines. Okay. Do we have a motion to support? <laughs> Nothing for me. <laughs> um, I move that we support the, the situation. Uh, uh, so I move that we, as the Situate Planning Board, support the CPC application for the scenic road signs. Um, Second. All discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. The next item is Al <laughs> Banghart request uh, for a uh, sidewalk study, a multi-use trail. Um, Al's not here tonight, and he's requested that we hold that discussion at our next meeting so I, I said that would be fine by me so we will talk about those at the next meeting um, this is going to run on country way this is from where to where way from green Greenbush Bush. Up, to, up, to, up to the center of Fishburne. Oh, okay yeah okay. pretty long way uh, it's, it's actually it's done in two phases one is, is up to Huey Road and then Huey Road down to the village mm -hmm. So it's a fair amount of money. It's, it's almost a million dollars all together. So from like Shones down to Greenbush? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> be an interesting constru construction project. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very narrow road. Yeah. It is. Yeah. With a lot with uh, trees and stone I, walls. And mm -hmm. The only concern that, that I have, and we can we'll talk about too. it when we do the actual vote, is that there will probably be multiple. It'll, it'll fit under recreation, and there'll probably be multiple applications under recreation. And the question becomes is, if we endorse each individual at some points, we're going to have to come back up and rank order so that we know which ones have a higher level of support. That's the right way of putting it than others. But, um, but going into the application to, for the initial hearings for CBC, it would have the initial support for the planning board. And then when they come back and we've figured out what the recreation ones are, since we're talking about this real quickly, just the since Country Way is a scenic road already, are there special considerations that we need to think about for the sidewalk? It's just that things can't be altered in a significant way, right? Yeah, the, the stone wall would be one, and if there are any trees that have to be cut down that are in the road layout. I think before Stockbridge Road sidewalk, didn't they come in with an application? Yeah. Yeah, okay. they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it, does this then turn it into a joint application, like from the planning board and DPW, or is it just? No, it's DPW. In effect, what we would do is we would, we would be supportive of the project if, if that was what the board decided. But they could submit without our support. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is this part of the sidewalk study 
project that was done a few years ago, or is this, this is so this yeah. one of the phases. It did the sidewalk done. study, and then they made recommendations of and ranked ordered where the sidewalks would be the most desirable. And at that point, now we're looking at, or they they are looking at to seeing how they fund those various components. Okay. Right, and this this ranked up high on the list of location. Being able to walk down to the train station in Greenbush without taking your life in your hands is a, a good thing. <laughs> or down to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, that's a crazy road right there. Gee, as long as it's not a sidewalk. So, so when he comes in to talk to us, is he also going to, maybe we should go over the sidewalk study a little bit too. And yeah, it'd be good to get an update. Get an idea of yeah, we can what the other alternatives mm -hmm. are for support. And he's going he's to bring a map um, okay. of where everything and what's been done? Now, now, remind me that the uh, the, the Gannett Road sidewalk or running path that's up there that bike was through bike path it was, it was uh, did that come out of a separate pot? Is that part of this, this overall thing? This CPC money, which this is as well, isn't it? This is this mm -hmm. proposal has yeah. been CPC money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think recreation is coming in. I think because they changed the rules in CPC, it and now allows us to. Before, if, if the field wasn't constructed with CPC money, we couldn't work on it. But now it comes back up with the change in regs that we can come back up and create fields, or we can modify or we can do Maintain. work on existing fields. So the question becomes is, um, I know that Recreation has got multiple projects that they're look, gonna be, be looking to bring in. And the question is, if this, how, how would you come back up and, and pick and choose between, uh, say, a field, uh, Work as opposed to a sidewalk work, because so you, you yeah. only have X number of dollars. That, that ultimately needs to be sorted out. So are we, are who we gets to make see that, that together? Who gets to assign priorities? Well, when it comes back, to, if it comes back to the planning board, we'll bring it back to the planning board and have the where we where we have endorsed or not endorsed. We come back up and see. Are there stated criteria that we apply to, to rank order these these different projects? It's objective. Uh, there is right now. Okay. I, I understand that they are talking about working on that going forward. Yes. Um, having some criteria for CPC to kind of have more of a master plan kind of concept about yeah. criteria versus more it. Because so, like the sidewalks, you know, that's a, in my mind, that's a health and safety issue, which would put it pretty close to the top. Yeah. I, I think there, were, there was talk about, um, you know, having priority of trails, you know, that connect and things like that versus just haphazard. And so I think... Bills on that committee. I know I've heard several members talk about doing that going forward, so I think they're working on that. Yep. So, is the idea though that if we look at the, the sidewalk for Country Way, we're going to have the benefit of not only what happened on the sidewalk study, but what the recreation people are already proposing? Will we know that? Well, this one is not through recreation, this one's coming in through DPW. No, I know, but, but from the perspective we, of we what we're in. What applications that are in front of CPC. Yeah, okay. those will be those will be available. They should be up on our website. Yeah, ultimately before town meeting, we'll know everything that okay. is going to go up, and ultimately it's all town vote. Yeah, on all the applications. So, you know, I also have the PDFs of all the recreation applications. Yep. Because um, Jennifer sent them to me, and I sent her this one, so I can send that around to everybody. Yeah. I think I think they're going to do a final vote on them at the meeting after Wednesday. I think of this week, Wednesday of next week. Which the ones they accept and which ones they don't? Which ones they're going forward with, I think. So. Okay, I'll wait. Okay. So we're all set on that. Um, next one is potential recommendation for Van Lot Road as a scenic road. I guess Bob, you're the one who brought that up. Yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. For, well, don't be too surprised. Um, it seemed to meet all the criteria that Laura had. had uh, put out in, in our little email exchange and certainly uh, it's um, an historic road we've got um, pieces of paper that are connected to our house that say Manlot was built sometime before 1700 uh, laid out as an original path uh, at least the part of it down towards Country Way and the Baptist Church so um, there's some nice stone walls a lot of it uh, well, not a lot, but a significant amount is bordered by uh, the cemetery, you know, one of the oldest cemeteries in town. Uh, uh, parts, other parts of it are bordered by the uh, Ellis Estate conservation land. Um, so I think it's a prime candidate. 
for all of those reasons. There was that project along there, right, with the massive clearing of trees. Is that what I'm thinking of? Uh, that not that along Manline. No. I'm thinking of another street yeah. by there. Um, not that I no, not that I've seen. Um, yeah, it must be Booth Hill then. It must be, yeah. You know where there are the houses kind of that's right. No, that's Hill that's Booth Hill that comes yeah, up yeah. from the village yeah. center I know towards three eight. Right, like the whole right. forest in front <laughs> of those houses. Yeah. yeah. I, when you said that, I thought you know I'd like to prevent that going forward. Absolutely. On some of those side roads, if we can. But right. right I, I guess the implications of making it scenic is then they have to come in front of us if they want to make changes to stone wall yep. trees within a certain area and yep. all of that. Yep. Gives a little protection of the border area at least there's some review connected to it yeah but again the town has to vote on that as it town has to vote yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the, pro the process as i understand is if we would come back up put together an article and bring it up in front of town meeting and then have town meeting vote yeah i, I guess the question if, if we're going to look at that should we be looking at any other roads and do it all at the same time very possibly that's sure where mm -hmm. that's where i'm coming from yeah very possibly now, do, do the stone walls have to be historic or can they be modern in order to, to qualify as a scenic road? I think the intent was for them to be historic, yeah. historic ones. Okay. Because, I, I, you know, I've seen people out there building new stone walls along the, you know, along the property lines. Right. And it, it seems to me that, 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 that you could, there's no reason why you might not want to exclude those. But I, I certainly understand why. I would think if you're building it along a scenic road, well, maybe if it's, in, maybe you have to get permission to build it in the first place. Yeah. It's a scenic road. I don't know. Hmm. But then it would probably, once built, uh, have the same protection as the uh, as the ancient walls. Yeah. It seems to me. So like, I think what I'm going to suggest is that we come back up and we advertise a public hearing and hold a public hearing for the potential of adding additional roads. Uh, identifying addition, additional scenic roads. So how would you do it? Just in, well, I think you, you want to be specific about specific ones. Or we could make a proposal. Otherwise, it's kind of open-ended. You know, not any board can propose them. It, it's the planning board, the CONCOM, or the historic commission. I, I wonder if this is something <coughs> we should talk to the historic commission about mm -hmm. before we get too far. I mean, they may have a better idea than we get to it quicker than we could. And right. I mean, there are maps of the town that go back at least to the early 1800s that would show you which roads existed in, in yeah. that period, for example. That would be a, a place to start thinking about. I mean, maybe it's worth sim as simple as having you know, write a letter to the Historic Commission say we're considering looking at additional scenic roads. We'd like your input and yep. mm -hmm. see if we yep. can start a discussion and then go from there. That's probably a better yeah. way to get That's it. Good. Yeah. What, what about um, publishing some sort of invitation for proposals? You know, if someone is aware of one that we just because it's on their on their lot, they know about it, and nobody like 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 Manlot Road. Mm -hmm. You live there, and, and you were driving down one day and realized, oh, this is a scenic road. Well, maybe other people have done the well, same it sort the of thing. Criteria, yeah. yes. And we we could put a little notice in the paper and ask mm -hmm. people to either you know call us in the office or email us and we can see, if, you or see if we can get the historical group to get involved. Yeah, yeah. But almost. Yeah. Be Let's better it. to go to the historical group and say, yeah, I, think I think I have a awesome. scenic road. What yeah. do you think? You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that I, mean, I think the danger of it is if you know you don't want you want to do real just legitimate ones and not right. create right. unnecessary you don't want process anybody... for every time somebody wants to have a driveway. Mm -hmm. but, right. So I, it seems like not maybe to mention you need more our... signs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, but, but but if if we if we published a notice and said if you think you have a scenic road, go to the historic commission. And then they screen them, and then they come to us. Yeah, send them to yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but maybe we'll like oh, create some work for a start commission. That's maybe something. something they're already working on. So yeah, mm -hmm. we can either send a letter, or we can have our liaison talk to them. Either way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the liaison choice. You want to send a letter? Or you want to talk to them? Um, I can send a letter. That's cool. No, I was giving you a choice. You can either talk to them, or I'll send a letter. Oh, you'll send. Okay. Um, why don't you send a letter? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for passing the buck? Well, you want to, well, where upon well, Lawrence says, "Write the letter, and I'll sign it." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so we got that. Uh, next item: minutes in the county. All right. <clears throat> 
I uh, move that we approve the minutes for the Situate Planning Board of September 27th, 2012, as well as the minutes for October 11th, 2012. Those are the ones who sent out by email. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You want to just do these all at once? All right. I move that we approve the uh, four um, requisitions. Uh, the first one is for, uh, let's see, total $193.12 for color copies of the uh, wind turbine reports for the selectmen uh, and mounting watershed protection district map for the fall town meeting. <laughs> I'm waiting for a response. Um, also, uh, for uh, $440, or $440, excuse me, the dues to the American Planning um, Association for to, to, uh, 2013, 260 APA um, professional dues. Uh, this also is 35 for the mass, 145 for the chapter, the AICP, and membership, uh, which equals the 440 total. Uh, uh, also $75 for the Mass Association of Planning Directors and the annual dues for 2012-2013 for the town planner, Laura Hawbottle. And last but not least, $36 for 11 by 17 color maps for the master plan copies for the, for the new member, an extra copy that you cannot re reproduce in-house. Or you cannot yeah. reproduce these in-house. Yeah. So that's $36. Is that it? We don't have a color copy for 11 by 17. Second. Is that right? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is town meeting reports. Let's hold off on that one. Um, I added, when at the beginning of the, the meeting, we added uh, an item discussion on the water, sh uh, water protection district. Um, on it. We have, as you know, we have a bylaw that's going up in front of this. this upcoming special town meeting on it. And what we've done, Laura identified that, if you recall at the last, when we actually voted it, we made a change that basically put in language that was dictated by the DP, DEP that basically asked that there would be no variances allowed uh, on the 20, on the 20 percent of the pervious surface for the various properties. What we found is that there are a number of these properties that would be affected that to, to maintain the 20% or not to exceed the 20% may preclude them from putting on an addition to their house or doing some work of that nature. So what I'm going to suggest that we do is we, we IP the existing article and resolve, uh, make sure that we understand exactly what the impact is on people that are in the areas that are being added to the water protection district. That makes sense. But is that mandated by the state, though, that change? It's it's mandated by the state, but what we don't know what that really means to the, the property owners. In other words, if we come back up and we vote it, does that mean, is, that, is there any way that, uh, is, does that preclude them from doing anything to the lot that they would currently be able to do? So, so in, well, in terms of grandfathering, kind of, kind well, of like we, that's what we don't know whether they yeah. would be grandfathered or not, right? So the question is to really understand what it is. It's going to take probably longer than between now and Tuesday to sit there and figure it out. So rather than do something that that impacts their rights, that that we may be able to obviate that impact, rather than going forward, what we do is we go forward with the annual as opposed to the special. Is that going to get us in Dutch with uh, the? Officials of the state. If we don't do this immediately, yeah, that was my concern. Is the time? Does the it time? Is up to that. Well, um, Al, Al doesn't think so. Um, we talked about it today, and he thinks that this permit extension act applies to his, the, the town's water withdrawal permit, oh. which I wasn't sure really? about that. But um, but he's pretty sure that it does. I, I mean, um, so my, my personal take on it, I think it's too risky for that type of concern, we could always remedy it later at annual town meeting, but if we're talking about possibly jeopardizing a water withdrawal permit over that question, I, I think you can't risk that. Yeah, unless you know for sure right now. 
Yeah, I mean, the worst that can happen is somebody's impacted and they can't expand their driveway or whatever it is, and maybe we could address that at annual. Yeah, the During the discussion, when we went forth and we were working on the article, it, what we, we opted to bring it in front of the special rather than waiting for the annual, but we could still wait for the annual and still not, not impact the water withdrawal permit. Well, that's what, well, that's like what we're, we're not, not sure about. Are we certain of that? That part we are sure of. I mean, at the beginning there was this big um, pressure to, to do something in, in a short period of time. And then as we got going, it came out that, or it became clear that that wasn't, that wasn't necessary and that the yeah. annual would be fine and that you know, probably even a year from the annual would be fine. Oh, it is. Oh, really? So, well, that's yeah. 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 that what we should do then. Yeah. 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 Because okay. you'll have more people at the annual, yeah. And, yeah. among other yeah. things. And, and yeah, we tomorrow. also have the other change that's not the water regulations, but the for the village overlay bis district but that we pulled this annual. time. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we. As long as, just long as it doesn't this. jeopardize the water withdrawal. I just know we had this mad yeah, scramble to get this clear. together. Right. Just well, a little while that ago. That was and, the initial yeah. thought, and then you know, it, I think once we got pretty far into it, and the, the water resource committee was was behind it, and the water department was behind it, and so on, it seemed like well, even though we don't absolutely have to do it immediately, we might as well go ahead and do it because all the wheels are in motion. Okay. And um, then this issue came up about the, um, the people with the lots that should be. Well, for sure we have time. Then there's no reason not to push it off. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I would that's agree where really. I'm, I'm coming down on it because what we originally started, we sat there and we were we figured we were under the gun to do it and we'd have to do it under the special. Then it came back out and found that we had additional time, so we said, "Just look, let's continue with the special, and then if there's any issues, that we can come back up and correct that." But the, the way it is now is that if we do it at the annual town meeting, we have the ability to come back up and, and pass it, resolve this issue, and still not, not impact on our control. That sounds good. So what I would ask for is a motion to uh, recommend an IP the article at the special town meeting. So moved. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You just cool. need three of us, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's three first signatures. Thank you. So I think that I think that makes sense to do that. So we will do that. I have already talked with Joe Norton, uh, the chair of the board, uh, Slockman, and indicated that there's a possibility that, that we would do that. And he said that he would support whatever decision that we would make. So and then Al is aware of our the potential of us doing that. DPW is aware. Having said that, next item on the agenda is town meeting reports, which we now have to modify to reflect our voters this evening. Okay. Um, when would we, we file those? Would we file those tomorrow? Um, my my concern is to let advisory yeah. know and, and formally yeah. notify the board of selectmen and the town administrator of what our vote was. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll do a memo, you know, to a, a letter to Kathy Cowan, and then we'll come be on this. Okay, good. The next item is the uh, Economic Development Commission uh, scheduled their meeting. Uh, you recall they, they come back up, they come in and report to us, mm -hmm. and then they also report to the Board of Selectmen. So I think they would be just about this time maybe for them to come in for their discussion. And they just went in front of the Selectmen a couple weeks ago, so. Yeah. Oh, good. So they should where they here. Where they are in terms of their uh, their studies, their analysis, so it would be good to have them come in. So I don't know what the board wishes to, or what time frame the board wishes to have them come in. I, I think the sooner the better. I mean, they, they did a report to the selectmen about the results of the townwide survey and had some really interesting information on yeah. that. I think it'd be helpful for us to hear that. I I'm assuming they're probably they obviously prepared for that presentation, so yeah. it's just a scheduling mm -hmm. thing if we can get them in here to talk to us as well. Sure. Can I sounds suggest good. that we have them not at the next meeting, but the meeting after? Yeah, it sounds like the 20th is pretty full. Yeah. So first first December meeting? It would be our when first is that? December meeting. Okay. You write them a note? Yeah. Yep. And that would be good. Uh, town planner report? Six. See, I alluded earlier to the fact that uh, Tricia has us 
um, doing the budget the same way as the past couple of years where we really need to be imaginative about you know, what kinds of things you know, we all want to accomplish in the next year. So I put out there, um, if you're thinking about grants, you know, are there particular areas you're thinking about grants for? Um, that might be one thing. Another thing that, that you know, I know you all have started on is the master plan. If you um, want to really get that done, you might want to consider hiring an outside firm to do it um, because I think you do get, you know, a different type of product when you do that. You get somebody who can be um, maybe objective or give you a, a new perspective or a different perspective than just our own. You know, we have all our own this perspectives. This is master plan update. You're yeah, talking this about? would be an update. And, and, and you're saying there's, there may be grant money available to, to hire somebody to do that? Well, I didn't actually say that. No. You know, we were hoping you would go. Yeah. It's an opportunity to say that. This, this is budget well, request, right? If it this were, is, you yeah. know, if it were honest, I would, you know, I would. But I mean, I, you, I, I don't think we can really say that. Uh, what they did in Marshfield was they went to town meeting and they actually got, you know, got a big chunk of money funded for their master plan. I think they got something like. $113,000 or whatever it was. This um, is not the facilities master plan that's already been funded. This is, this is. For, for $113,000, I'll do the It's master basically, plan. well, okay, it's well, what we did we last year. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's what we tried to do last year, yeah. an update as much as possible that Nico kind of coordinated when we were all our doing own, our yeah. own sections. Yeah, I mean, and, this I think would be something, you know, a little different from right. what we can all accomplish on our own. Yeah. Well, it would be done by, a, by a professional person who has That's the appropriate initials after their name and all that kind of stuff. And they're, they're devoted to that. And yeah, they can get they it do. done within a time frame Real that's fast. reasonable. And I think particularly if there's interest in, in doing some planning around CPC, which is, which is fabulous to hear that mm -hmm. the town is really thinking about doing that, you know, you really want to have that built into a plan where you get public input and you're really looking at what the long-term goals should be for the town, you know, for the town's physical development. And, yeah, and I, I mean, I guess so. I, I thought two things. The CPC, I think, needs a plan. I'm not sure if we originate that budget request or CPC does. I picture that being sort of like a separate plan. Yeah, CPC could actually put that Maybe out it could be tied. You know, maybe oh, yeah, yeah. You should use the results of their plan yeah. and sort of feed it into the yeah. master plan. I mean, I, I'm obviously more concerned about economic development. We had our request last year that we didn't get. I still think that's absolutely essential. And I mean, I, I do feel like. Well, the master plan's important. I don't think that it's something that we tend to look at very often. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we focus on something like economic development again and have something we can actually hit the ground running with and make some, I still think that's the number one priority. I mean, everything in town right now is all about all these giant capital projects. And there's yeah. been very little it's focus on It's a great dovetail for that. How we're going to yeah. pay for them. I think it's just critical that if we're going to spend money, we need to invest it in how to raise revenue for the town. and. Well, I so I, I, I'm more of the mind that we request again what we didn't get last year and go after that so we can actually do the study, which we were talking about, I think it was $40,000 in two stages, right? right. That we was the, the priced out. The Georgetown similar stu type study, uh, right? Was it Georgetown? You, well, or you used it? the example yeah, was, for Georgetown. Georgetown was an example. Yeah, um, okay. But we priced it out. We had the, um, what the MAPC looked at it. Yeah. I mean, we know what it costs yeah. from other towns. Mm -hmm. This is a tangible thing. We presented it to the selectmen they denied us I, I mean I think that's got to be the number one priority still now are we going to last year we sort of submitted that somewhat on our behalf and somewhat on behalf of the Economic Development Commission are we still going to submit them as part of our budget or do you think they should oh, I, submit I separately they're, or they're doing their, they're own, doing their own okay with, with a budget. well I, I just want to make sure that gets in there somewhere and yeah, you don't want to well, duplicate I, efforts here you don't want right? to I don't want to yeah. duplicate efforts, but it's almost sort of like a co-sponsored thing. I mean, we, we requested yeah, it last sense. year and didn't get it, and I still think it's the number one priority. So I, I well, kind of feel I, like I maybe we should. working with MAPC again yeah. this year to try to go after some form of a market analysis that they would do. And there are some other options for them. There's some software that they can buy that Esri, sorry, mm -hmm. that, okay. uh, one of Richard's okay. competitors puts out, right. which I've seen the reports and there's, uh, you know, 
very detailed market demand that comes out, mm -hmm. you know, of their of their results. It's called uh, community analyst, um, and that only it's it's four thousand dollars, but it takes somebody grinding through all the numbers. Yeah. But they have a lot of data that um, can be used that you know that they access. Yeah, I mean, so. it, it seemed to me the studies we looked at last year that other towns have done and that MAPC suggested were exactly what we needed for the town. I mean, yeah. it, it seemed like the obvious choice is what's done by other towns successfully, and I know. Um, the EDC will report on this when they come to the, us. They did to the selectmen too. But one of the questions was, you know, do you support development on 3A? And it was the vast majority of people did. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like the one of the primary questions. But I don't think you can really look at that without some professional analysis and yeah, impact I mean, you how think, to make you do think it the of, right way and all of so, that. Well, uh, if you what think of the 3A we, card. Or, no, no, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, if you think of the 3A corridor as it runs through Situate, there's going to be limited areas that can be developed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, there's true. a lot of wetlands. There's a lot of town-owned land, the town the town forest, yeah. the, the, the Ellis estate land. That's um, what we need to find out. And yeah, somebody really should knows. take that in hand and find out what we've what we've got to work with. Yeah. Well, I think, you, I think you're right. The biggest motivator here is that we're now sort of stepping it up another level of this facilities master plan and how much money is involved in trying to accomplish those kinds of things without some additional re – you need the revenue balance on something like that. And I just think it brings a bigger emphasis to economic development. Yeah, we clearly can't make it up with giant development projects. It's not going to happen in yeah. Sitchwick, but, but to not be looking at that – at the same time, we're looking at the other things. We have the, the yeah. gate studies coming up for a vote, 750000 for the study, probably you know, $40, 50000000 million if the project goes through. It's split with the state, I know. That's, that's huge. The library project, I guess, they got their, they got their $5 million, but that's subject to the town coming up with, I with can't remember what it is. I think it's seven, I want to say, but it's a significant amount of yeah. money. So in this capital need thing is not going to end anytime soon. We haven't even talked about the seawalls yet. More, so. Yeah. So I just feel like you know not having that study that would happen is a real uh, travesty not yeah. to get that going. Agreed. Which comes to my question: What can we do to effect effectively advocate or, or sell the need for this? We need to request it again, and we need to advocate for it. I mean, well, we requested it once; it didn't get it. And we need or to support CBC. They're, they're really in their interested request. in spearheading it for themselves, and I think yeah. that when they were in here before the selectmen that they definitely made a point of talking about that and yeah. as they were talking about it you know Trisha kind of uh, mentioned that this year they got nine thousand dollars they're looking for 15 from MAPC and then she seemed to suggest that they had a very good chance of getting another nine for the following year so you put those two nines together that's 18 and 15 so you get you know, sort of 33 uh, it's there. very frustrating to me because we're talking about such a small amount of money yeah. I mean we're the projects mm -hmm. we're talking about for you know seven hundred fifty thousand dollars study mm -hmm. uh, what's in front of us for CPC funds just the sidewalk thing you're talking you know over half a million dollars in two phases yeah. um, we're, we're looking for forty thousand dollars to try to raise revenue for the town it's just I, I can't can understand it why that part of the 750. It can't, unfortunately, no. because the um, the MSB requires the that money be separated out as its own line item. Mm. It's MSBA money, money. But in the scheme of things, I mean, to look at a forty thousand dollars study to potentially raise revenue for the town when we're spending millions of dollars on capital projects, it seems like a drop in the bucket. It seems like a no-brainer. I'm shocked we didn't get it last time. Mm. It, I, it, I think it's definitely something you should explore with them. I mean, I think we should request that as our budget priority from the planning board. You know, it, it can't be part of the 750 because that's Mass School Building Authority, but yeah. it could possibly be part of the 375 if somebody wanted to release it. Uh, the 375 is that's the been appropriated. facilities master plan? The facilities uh, master that plan. would make a perfect sense to me. I mean, yeah. because that sounds like it's going to be such a big demand on capital. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but it might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. I think they might be tying those pots of money together somehow to no I don't think I don't no. think you can do that okay has there been any meeting of the not master that, plan group not that I know of Bill you no, were a liaison people but not no meetings yet 
I mean, the, the way to think about it is if you're going to master plan for new facilities for the town, at the same time, another component of that master plan should be how are you going to pay for it. Exactly. Yeah. Who's going to identify the cost and the other needs to be there? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, it's, and it's clearly it's a long term prospect. I mean, there's not going to be any, you know, yeah. magic bullet that's going to solve the EMC revenue. Needs here to, but we can tomorrow, make a dent in it. And it's a long term <laughs> process. So the sooner we get that direction out there, and that kind of ties into the master plan. Like instead of spending, you know, 120000 on overdoing the whole master plan, I'd rather see a smaller amount of money focused on the immediate need for now. I agree. Yeah, I'd certainly support that. Yeah, I would too. And with the economic. facilities money, the one thing I was thinking about is that if it could be, like we're, you know, the idea that we're kind of rearranging some of the facilities around, that part of that, not tied to the school per se, but if there was, like, again, where the, the new junior high is, I think, proposed to be behind here, right? Then could this become awesome. some type of retail, small, mm -hmm. in the front, like where the town hall and the city, or and the police station are? Yeah. Could that be some kind of combination that you could use there? <laughs> Like, I guess what I'm saying is proposing not only a school or a campus, as they were saying, but some kind of retail to fund it, potentially. A grocery store. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I think you're going to have, really, want, you're going to want to do the entire stretch of 3A from border to border, including probably the villages, the North yeah. Situate and Greenbush. Mm -hmm. and, Definitely want Greenbush. And just evaluate what's, what's there. And this site will be one of the sites. Right. There'll be, you know, there'll be a series of... Well, I think the studies, too, that they were looking at, it's a couple phases. One is sort of identifying um, what businesses would fit in situ that we don't have, what we can attract. There's mm -hmm. limitations there. Yeah. And then the next step is, you know, where are areas that we should look at possible rezoning or expanding business areas or things like that. So it's a sort of a holistic look at it. Um, but it's, it's a jumping off point for mm -hmm. getting things going. And without that, I think... We can talk about as much as we want, but we need some kind of concrete numbers to point out and say this makes sense, this doesn't. Right. right. And, and I understand for the 750 that's at the special town meeting next week, um, the selectmen are saying that they have that money available out of existing funds, which I don't know how that's possible, but you know, everyone's talking about we needed the overrides for this and that, but they're saying that the 750 is basically in, I don't know if it's in free cash or other funds we have, but they're saying we don't need to borrow. so. To me, asking for forty thousand dollars should be a no-brainer. Well, uh, excuse, pardon me. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we asked for the money last year. Mm -hmm. They said no. Mm -hmm. If we asked for the money this year and we needed even more than we did last year, the how do we how do we get past no we do to a, yes? We do why, did, why did they say we do no? Last signature year. petition. And okay. It, you know, so, so that's what it's going to take. Yeah. Why and did they say no last year? Happen. We're also conjecture in terms of what economic development is is requested or what they've they've got their preliminary discussions on. So yeah, the, the, I think it could be an item on the our their meeting with us is that what have they requested? What do they think they need? Right, and, and how yeah. can we help augment that? Yeah. Right, but I think in general, I think the board supports the position of if there is some type of priority that the economic development and some of these other studies may take priority over updating the master plan. I certainly would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Dan, that 750 is going to be reimbursed about 50% by the state, so it's if really only 375 Yeah, if we get in the process. Yeah. It. yeah, exactly. I think it's a 40%. Well, 40, it's 40 40's the, 40's the base, but it'll, it can yeah. creep up depending on what, you know, what you do with it. The other items? Bob, motion for Bob. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you know what I had one thing to Well, you had the liaison reports, oh, right? Oh, I am sorry. Um, so on October 18th, I went to the South Shore Coalition meeting, which is a, the subdivision of the MAPC. Uh, they did a really nice uh, presentation on transit oriented development, which I sent to Laura, and she subsequently sent out to all of you. Um, I actually did ask the question, tying in economic development, to MAPC saying, what could we do as a planning board to try to um, enhance or uh, create development around these transit centers? And a lot of it was about zoning is what they said. And I think we, we've kind of done all the things that we can do to some degree. I talked about like an RFP, as, we, as we've mentioned, about for an apartment community or maybe for retail. And they said that they weren't that familiar with having like the actual that coming from the planning board. So. Mostly, they, 
I mean, his response was mostly the planning boards tend to like help create the zoning and the like, like as we've done the village overlay districts and so forth. But there were some really good examples if you do have a chance to read through that PDF mm -hmm. um, about uh, in general, like North Situate is considered to be a village center um, in their mind that that has potential. Uh, Greenbush is actually undeveloped, which makes sense. Um, so there's a lot more um, potential for sort of shaping the development maybe around Greenbush. Uh, and that Situate is classified as a, I think what they said, maturing suburb. So it's actually, uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised nice. by that too, <laughs> was that in, in some cases it's becoming sort of more saturated with the development according to their studies. So there's all this information that you can read through, but um, it was quite interesting. And in fact, um, they mentioned that if they ever wanted to, if we wanted to have a presentation by the, the people that create or did the, the, um, that study, um, that they would be happy to come in and present to the board at some point. So That'd just I'll great. throw that out there if you'd like that. Um, there's a couple other things that were thrown out there as far as transportation planning with the MBTA. There was actually a meeting tonight in Quincy, um, which I would have liked to have gone to, but it was basically to hear kind of the gripes maybe about why you know we lost weekend service and um, some of the other issues around you know transportation planning on the South Shore. There's something coming up, I'm thinking two weeks, about expanding South Station, and I'm planning to go to that. Uh, I think it's like on a Monday night, the 19th. Expanding uh, South Station yeah. rail? Uh, yes, the, the South Station facility, so that that could uh, enhance South Coast rail and potentially have more service for the three lines that are the, the old colony lines, so yeah. the Plymouth, uh, Middleborough, and Greenbush. And you're a train guy, so that's... Yeah, right. so I thought it was good. <laughs> I thought they uh, were pretty much landlocked by the post office. Well, the, the post office would be relocated. Actually, the Postal Service wants to relocate to South Boston, and so that would open up that facility for redevelopment. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, they've been talking about that one for a long time. I know, I know. Yeah, it's all in the <laughs> – but anyway, they, they're starting to have meetings on it, so I've been kind of uh, focused or uh, interested in that. The other thing I wanted to mention – was the historical society I you were copied on a couple of emails about this I realized that I don't know why it took me so long that I'm like I'm not going to these historical society meetings because they were on the exact third Thursday of the South Shore coalition meetings so I was wondering if maybe someone else would like to pick that up maybe Steve if you would like to be the liaison or I, I, I don't want to you know, put something that you're not interested in but just as a thought because I, I feel bad that I'm not going to one since they're conflicting so I'd be happy to give it a try you know, okay I, I you own don't it. know anything about it, you own it. the other thing is Sorry. that through a, a conversation I had with uh, the historical um, Commission is that they said that they would be willing to come into a, the planning board at some point and also present some of their ideas um, and about historical resources so Maybe you, scenic roads. You were copied area. on that as well. So <laughs> again, just to throw that out there, that we might want to schedule something. So th uh, those are my liaison updates. I, I really like the idea of having um, collegiate organizations, whatever they might be, the, the historical commission, the other group that you talked about, coming in and at least coordinating. You know, and so that we we understand what they're doing, they understand what we're doing, and and, uh, and so that we don't find ourselves working across purposes. Mm -hmm. or, or we're helpful to one yeah, another. And, well, and, and, we're, and, and perhaps able to share resources, which right, yeah. would be really good. Well, with your permission, I, I can work maybe with you to set up a time um, for them to come present, uh, depending on a, what sure. we have open. Yeah. Sure. If yeah. that's okay with everyone. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's great. I said two really quick thoughts. One about we were talking about the master planning for the CPC. There may be a way for the CPC to get money from the CPC to do that, I'm thinking, because they've gotten money for studies before, like Gates for Historic. Maybe they can, you know, someone could put in an application for that and handle it that way. That way it doesn't come out of the general budget. That's sort of a master plan for CPC priorities. Yeah, I'm sure that, actually, now that you mentioned, I'm sure that they could do that. I, I think that would be the way to money. get to is, that. And is, there, is there any reason? I'm sure there is. I just can't think of it. Why we can't fund the, the Economic Development Commission study out of CPC for monthly. 
uh, doesn't fit the uh, criteria. That's why I'm just asking, is there some way we can shoehorn that in? Recreation, Not affordable housing. <laughs> well, the, you know, how are we going to pay for recreation and affordable? I don't know. But that's a nice way to kind of um, fund it out of CPC, and then maybe the results of that give us a jump start on the master plan eventually. It can kind of segue into that because they can look at recreation and historic and all that. The other, the other quick thing I had is that... Um, I ran into an article about the uh, medical marijuana passing in Massachusetts, and there's been, I don't know, there's probably five different towns that have been very proactive already about, yeah. about right. what they want to do. And I don't really have any opinion about it. It's just something to think about right now. But um, some towns are talking about, um, you know, if you don't do anything at all with your zoning, it's a commercial use. It can go wherever commercial uses are. Some towns are trying to actually keep it out of their town entirely. Mm -hmm. um, other towns are just saying, should we treat this like a sensitive use where you zone it to a limited area in town and things like that? And um, it's it might be something we want to think it? about. Um, I mean, would it, you, wouldn't you get it through a pharmacy? No, it's a, it's no, a they're separate gonna dispensary. Have, they're going to have medical yeah. dispensaries, which is a separate building oh. where they grow it and they mm -hmm. dispense it. Oh, my gosh. And there's going to be 35 of them, I think, by next year. And I think it's limited to like five, I don't know, there's limits like five per county or something like that. But oh. but if you don't do anything with your zoning code, it's just like a retail use, I, is my understanding. So it could go in any of our commercial business districts. So. It's just something to think about, and maybe we want, I can give you this, Laura, if you want, if you're interested. But um, there's been a few towns that have been very proactive, and I think have already adopted changes to their zoning to address this. And I really don't know. Are they, are they mostly they trying to prevent it, or are they just trying to direct it? I think there's a couple that are actually trying to keep it out of their town well, entirely, uh -huh. tying into the federal laws or something. Well, I, but well like um, Eric mentioned, the one I heard about in Quincy was that it. They couldn't be like 1,500 feet to a school, uh, to, a, school, to yeah. a church. I think there, those are the church, school. And, and housing development. Something like, yeah. yeah oh, no. Neighborhood. Also next to a bar, an existing yeah. um, tavern or something like that. Like they couldn't yeah. be right next door. There, there's some towns, <laughs> I think, that are discussing, do you treat it like um, an adult use category, which yeah. is very narrow zoning. This is the only place you can have it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, but some we might want to look into a little bit, just get a feel, because I, I don't want to be surprised a year from now and um, to me if one went in like on front street where one of the really offices is that's not something i would be supportive of i wouldn't be happy um, right. are, are, are these could these be serious revenue generators potentially yeah. you know so that that's my question is that it, if you know we're we're looking for uh, ways Economic to generate development. income and tax it revenue and so forth and I mean, that was one of my I've, first thoughts. I, I, I have real, real divided thought, you know, mixed feelings over this. But. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, that's one of the things. Do you say, you know, yes, we allow them, and they're only going to go on this area of 3A, and it kind of keeps it away from the residential areas, and it's um, because you're, I imagine you're going to get a certain amount of out-of-town, you know, people. There's not going to be a, a lot of them. There's not going to be one on every corner, so there is going to be a traffic thing. Yeah. There's talk about whether it would... Um, I just don't know. They just don't know what the effects are going to be. But you can look at places like Colorado that have these and mm -hmm. what's worked there and what hasn't. But I just feel like we should be a little proactive about it so we don't get caught off guard. That would be a good question up. for the EDC. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, maybe that's yeah. maybe yeah. the rest of the medical <laughs> buildings are. Maybe. And just uh, maybe, quickly. Maybe down by the turbine where that, those people can't live anymore because <laughs> they're getting sick. But why would it generate revenue? I'm just curious. Because uh, it's commercial property. Yeah. It's like commercial yeah. property taxes. Okay. But just not like anything. If it it wouldn't have a city revenue. sales you, tax. You right. No. Right. No. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I mean, it could... It could uh, uh, I just think... Without the meal tax, it could, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it, it does make you hungry. So if we have to build that, I'm kind of thinking of it in the same terms as I the liquor stores or when you go. I know, I, it's getting late, so. But I, I just think I just wanted to raise it that something that we should probably talk about and kind of see what other towns are looking at and, and just um, be a little proactive about well, it. Versus, you know, you hate to in hindsight say, why didn't we adopt something? Well, yeah. and, and I apologize for my ignorance, but do we have zoning currently for an adult entertainment district? In uh, I don't know if we do or no. Or the, the selectmen, no. you know, certain selectmen have been very um, like um, concerned about it as an issue. 
I mean, it's something that's been on the town's radar for a long time, but we just haven't really done anything. No, now. but it's, they've never been concerned enough to bring it forward. Is the term suggesting? Well, most towns have it. I mean, the thing is, you can't you can't not allow it. Right. You have Constitutionally. to allow it, but you can restrict mm -hmm. certain areas within reason, and most towns put it in an industrial area or something right. like that that you're sure you're away from schools and. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the conversation about the medical marijuana dispensaries is that do you want to do that or do you want to say you know we're open for business and let's not worry about it and then, yeah maybe it's a potential revenue generator or, and I don't really know where I fall on that I'd like to kind of see the, it's obviously been in a, a lot of other places California Colorado places like that there, there's plenty of examples to look at and I just haven't done that so. and, and we still don't know how the how the you know federal law enforcement is going to respond to this you know the local federal guys yeah I really don't want to be raided by the DEA <laughs> or anybody else yeah mm. <laughs> That's all I have. should we revisit this in a couple you know a couple weeks or should we you know, decide now well, if you're if we're interested in well I think it or I think not? Laura what I was thinking about is that um, I, I'm not positive about the timing of it but I think um, now it goes to the uh, I don't know, the Department of Health or whatever at the state yeah. level has to come with regulations it's by the same, certain day. It's the same department that had the, the, the woman that worked in the drug lab. Yes. Uh, so if there's been, oh, yeah. I saw a report on that, that they were, there was some yeah. concern there as well. But. So they're coming with reg regulations, but there is a timeline, and it's pretty quick. And so my thought is it would be nice to maybe reserve a spot for this spring, you know, annual town meeting and see if we can come up with something to get ahead of it if, if there is something that we want to do yeah. and I don't know what the timeline is it seems like we usually have to finalize things or get a spot reserved before the end of the year it's pretty quick coming up pretty quickly but you don't have to have it finalized do you the actual language you have to have it pretty close no but um, well uh, now that the town meeting is going to be in April yeah I, I guess we'd, we'd have like another month of leeway so yeah I think we'd be wanting to decide what articles are going to go forward at yeah. the end of the year hmm. So it seemed like we'd need a fair amount of sort of background research on it yeah. in order to yeah, even make that decision. The time frame. Yeah. Well, or, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think that probably situates in the crosshairs in immediately, but something maybe like not for 2013 town meeting, but maybe it could be 2014 town meeting. But That's what I, I don't know. I, don't know. I think the timing's pretty fast on when it's allowed. I think it's next oh. year. Uh, no, as it's far as... Yeah. Maybe we could even try for the fall town meeting again. I don't know if that's, you yeah, know, I think. Pretty clear they don't like, well, their current thinking is they don't want zoning. Yeah. Right. But that could be subject to change. Yeah. I mean, it could be as simple, uh, it could be as simple of a change in the zoning bylaw to say, you know, this category of use is only allowed in Greenbush, for example. I mean, it wouldn't have to be this elaborate plan of, it could we could just decide that we don't want it on Front Street, or we don't. You know, it could be a simple change like that initially in further study. But I think you'd you'd have a lot of public input, though. You'd, yeah. you'd you know, it's it's going to be a yeah, process of hearings and, and getting consensus. And yeah, but I, I think the risk is that if you way. don't do that, then there could be one here by. Well, I have to look at the article, but it could be next summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we could kind of miss the window. Yeah, no, I hear that. And I'm not sure that would be a bad thing necessarily, but I, mm -hmm. I don't want to be surprised when people go, oh, if we'd only done what these other towns are doing. They're all scrambling. A bunch of, well, not, there's five or six that actually, I think they adopted stuff before the vote even happened or mm -hmm. almost concurrently with the right. vote. So. Yeah. And the closest one being Quincy. Complicated um, question. I don't remember. It's in that artist. Milton, I think, was real proactive. and. Mm. Um, well, I'll, I'll look into it a little more. Think, Maybe Laura can too, and we'll see what we come up think with. Think Cohasset. Yeah. Did you hear about that drug deal that's happened at the Stop and Shop? <laughs> it's like this huge South Shore drug ring. Who knew? Oh, really? Yeah. They, they were saying that um, the article was talking about, like, uh, there can be an additional burden on the police, I guess, because um, if they pull someone over, if they have a certain... I guess you get IDs in most states or something, and it's it makes policing it more difficult, and there's mm. a potential impact on town services yeah. if one comes into your town. And I, I just don't know how much is you know anything new like that. You always have that you know fear like of the worst, which are probably, yeah. but it, it's been but tested there, in other states. Yeah, so there's some places it's been there for 
for a few California years. California for yeah. a long time, I yeah. think. Well, do you have this that information that you gave Laura uh, electronically? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just an article. It's not really... I mean, I'm seeing which ones uh, want to avoid having it. There's not much there right now. It's just a quick article talking about some towns that have yeah. done some things. Have you seen any estimates of how many people are actually going to qualify for this under the medical, you know, exemption, restriction, whatever? I, I think... I mean, is it hundreds of thousands of people? I, I think can't it's possibly. virtually 100% of the people that live through the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> what it sounded like is that the, the um, what passed was so vague, they're kind of leaving it up to the state regulator, regulators to determine how that program's going to look. So it's kind of wide open right now, and I think they're going to look at other states' programs and, mm -hmm. and see, but it's... Um, it, it's largely unknown right now until uh, they go through the whole regulation process. I imagine process. That the, the, the zoning requirements will look a lot like a yes. commercial bakery, won't they? <laughs> it's, it's for people that, that are in chronic pain or that are dying or that. Well, cancer well, is a good one. People that are on yeah, chemo yeah. Well, chemotherapy. Well, not anybody's going to be able to yeah. just go in there with yeah, a fake license good. or something. No, no, but my understanding places like California, I mean, if you have back pain, you can get a prescription and you can, yeah. you know, I have, I have back It just pain. depends so on what your doctor writes yeah, the it's prescription not, it's for. It's not difficult in most of those states to get it, is my understanding. It really is hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And it, it depends on the regulations. Because the law, the way that they put it on the ballot this time was right. very vague. It mm -hmm. didn't say this is limited only to terminally ill cancer patients. It said chronic pain. And mm -hmm. chronic pain is interpreted, I guess, in Colorado and California as you know, hey, my back hurts. Okay, here you go. It's become a cottage industry that way. So um, it's up to the regulators now, which there's a whole formal public hearing process and all that. It'll all be vetted, I'm sure. But right now, from like a, you know, a town perspective, we just, we don't know what that's going to look like. So maybe we welcome it and it's a revenue generator. Maybe we <laughs> want to, you know, I'd, I'd like put some reasonable restrictions on it. I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I, th I think we'd be, we'd be getting into a whole discussion about kids and mm -hmm. know, drug use. Mm -hmm. and yeah, my understanding is it's a pretty serious problem. It's a, it's well, well, it's interesting what that article talks Maybe about. They can get it passed by like a 60 percent vote, but then you ask people the if they want country. out of town. Maybe well, that's why it's so big. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. just yeah. the classic retail situation, right? Yeah. right? It's like, of course, I support it, but I don't want it anywhere near me. And so it's we, uh, we, we could we could there could be a new use for the uh, for the dump. And after they're done, we'll just. Like you said, build a hydroponic facility and yep. use run on top. <laughs> we'll distribute it everywhere. Wholesale. Dry it with the solar panels. Yeah. Yeah. We have Bob's motion. Uh, yes, we can do that. Have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.